Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Well, you people are in for a rare treat because I'm about to introduce to you a gentleman, and I mean gentleman. This man has helped me out, and if this man can help me, I know he can help every one of you out there. May I proudly present my personal close good friend, Shoeplex City, bitch. Welcome and thank you for downloading episode 46 of Suplex City Limits for Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2016. As always, it's your Valentine that always works stiff. Jim, click Commander Vicious, <laughs> along with the May Young to my Mark Henry. Red old Commando here coming at ya. And our severed hand love child. <laughs> What's up, jerks? <laughs> Oh, Suplex City Limits is available for listening everywhere fine podcasts are found. Follow us on Twitter at Suplex City Limit. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Suplex City Limits. If you'd like to donate to the show, uh, patreon.com slash everybody, Suplex City Limits. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on today's episode, we talk wrestling news of the week. We take a look back at WWF St. Valentine's Day Massacre, Raw, NXT, we feebled your romance questions, came in off Twitter, and we ducked a new in Hall of Famer. Gentlemen, how goes it? Uh, pretty good. Pretty damn good. Yes, sir. Both at the same time. <laughs> you like that intro, dude? Always working stiff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not right now, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, that's my business. <laughs> <laughs> why we record at separate fucking places mm. uh so getting into uh the week uh i suppose we lead off with the daniel Bly brian <laughs> daniel brian <laughs> 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 uh, well we're on fire right away today holy fuck huh uh, i'm fucked up already today sorry <laughs> <laughs> the daniel brian retirement um uh, thoughts on that gentlemen you guys think he was forced into it? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, obviously. Well, I mean, not by doctors, so. No, it was definitely a doctor decision. Okay. Right. He had uh, requested his release from WWE recently, but I think that he had another test that convinced even him that it was like, yeah, done. He was on Sports Center the next day, and he said he was hiding, having seizures and shit. 
Yeah, he, w- he went and saw, I guess, another specialist, and this one's the one that found the lesion in the brain that was causing him to have seizures, and he's like, this is only going to get worse. <laughs> right. And I guess that's the end. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man, because, like, that's the thing. It's lot, you see a lot of people who just don't get it out there. It's, well, he could have done another match. Like, he really couldn't do another match. No. Uh, it's like the people who said that to Edge. It's like, you guys realize he could be paralyzed at any moment, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, that guy might sneeze fucking wrong and be paralyzed, shit. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, you know, and it, the, I think he was obviously forced to tweet that out that afternoon. <laughs> They're like, go ahead and... Go ahead and tweet that out and tell people to tune in because a lot of people did tune in. Their ratings were up. And I know a lot of people, here was their chance to book a good show and get some people back because I know a lot of people tuned in who haven't been watching wrestling for a while. And, uh, yeah, they didn't really do that. Although I didn't think Raw was, I mean, it was bad. It's always bad, but it wasn't as bad as it has been. Maybe it was just that it ended with that. (laughs) That That made me feel different about it but yeah you're looking at a guy who has only five years in the company man he yeah. blew him you know he was 85 percent fucking done before he got any kind of you know shot so yeah he had 16 years in the business and like 10 of those were outside the wwe putting on fucking crazy ass matches mm-hmm. yeah i mean there's a lot of people who uh whose opinions are worth a lot more than ours, who say that, like, there was times where he was the best wrestler in the world. I don't know about all that. Yeah, well, he was. I mean, there's a lot of people that say it, so I don't just, I can't disagree with it. Yeah, it was, it's, it was him, and uh, towards the end of his run, Nakamura probably knocked him off the pedestal as the best in the world, but he was up there for a very long time. Will they use the current greatest in the business better than they used him? No. No. <laughs> no, they're gonna they're not gonna use Nakamura, my favorite my favorite wrestler in the world. They're not gonna use him right. Over <laughs> under on him coming out to Ching Chang Chong music. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what, what do you give the what do you give the over under than that? I, I don't think it'll be that bad. <laughs> but it's not gonna be good. It's probably gonna be like well, it's NXT, I suppose, so it's, the music will be done by CFO or whatever it is. As long yeah. as he doesn't come out on a bicycle holding a fucking to-go bag full of Chinese food, I think looking, I'll be okay with it. Looking like fucking Jerry Lee Lewis from that, uh, from I don't know what movie that is, the big fucking buck teeth and shit. Yeah. Raise that. I think Triple H will use him right, and then when Vince sees that he's Asian on the main roster, he's going to immediately make him the next Funaki. He's going to be Kung Funaki, yeah. Kung yeah exactly. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, and you know, you know they're gonna neuter his work style from Go. So, oh yeah, yeah. It's like he's not. It's like all of that uh, build up uh, you guys do that makes it way more exciting. Uh, cut all that out. <laughs> cut out that fucking that ten minute build that Japanese matches have. Yeah, cut that out gets the fun. You fucking in the mood, man. Uh, I like that work style, man. Starts off slow. Gets you get fucking ready, and it adds a lot of weight to the big shit when it does happen. Yeah. Although they are getting a little, uh, little spot monkeyish over there. But Depending uh, on yeah, like the world heavyweight match is always gonna be that style, the slow build to the amazing counters and all that stuff. But the the juniors, they've always allowed them to kind of do spot monkey work. Yeah, because you go back and even look at like a Super J ninety four. Almost every match, that was the thing when we did that for this show. I hadn't really seen it in a long time, and not under the eye of, uh, you know, the critic eye, if you will. Or Yeah. And I was like, man, all these matches follow that exact same, <laughs> the exact same build, you know? Yeah. It's almost got a little boring by the end of that, but still probably the single greatest night of wrestling uh, that's ever occurred. And it was uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, There's the, a lot the of talent on that roster that night. You'll never see that again, even though WWE should theoretically have that type of show every pay per view. Well, they can get pretty That's much fair. anybody they want, so. Uh, but they choose not to, so. But yeah, man, that's, uh, you know, it was a kind of a sad ending. But at the same point, like, dude, I'm happy for that guy. I'm happy he's going to go off and, you know, hang out on this farm and fucking procreate and all that jazz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't end up as like the lead trainer in NXT or starting his own school out in Washington. He should start his own school. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Do you see him living in Florida though, man? I don't see that. True. 
you know. He may be a yeah. Little, yeah, he may be a little too liberal for Florida. He, he should start one out on his farm, dude. That'd be sweet. <laughs> That'd be a cool place to go if you were. Everybody a... shit in the bucket for compost. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We can make you fucking gluten free, uh, you know, snacks and shit. It'd be great. Yeah. Well, if you were an aspiring pro wrestler and an option was to go and stay and like live on fucking Daniel Bryan's farm and learn wrestling, I mean, I'd probably choose that, right? Yeah. That's Plus, like then you can get free labor out of those guys too, you know? That's what freaking Kanye did. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. Feed the chickens, the and the ring was in the barn, and there was no heat, so it didn't matter. <laughs> Dude, there was there'll still be fucking few places ever as like diabolical as uh, as Ganya's fucking training facility. Dude, that that the guys that came out of that place though. Well, that's true. Fuck. Pretty much every, anybody who's anybody. Yeah. That's ridiculous though. The, the, people talk about the shit they went through there, and it, it's just disgusting. <laughs> I would fucking die. Ric Flair fucking quit. Like more than once. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't hack it on that shit. Uh, so yeah, man. Daniel Bryan. You know, like I said, it's weird. He. A, a lot of people were kind of shitting on the guy. I was surprised. Like people. There's people who hate him or whatever. I don't know. That's he, the fucking internet. Well, that's true. He's like, I guess, the last true face, man. You know. Yeah. Uh, never before. I don't. Has anyone ever gotten as far on just the fucking crowd on just us choosing it? You know, it was such a weird thing that I don't think you're gonna ever see again in WWE, where they didn't want to use that guy, but they were forced to. You know, like yeah. the crowd actually forced it, and that's that's something that I can't it, name a guy that's ever happened with. I can't think of any. I can't. No. No, no, nobody's ever had the card stacked against him, and I think it seems like he always just had a positive attitude about it, too. Like he was just like, whatever. I just love to wrestle, so whether they're gonna push me or not, <laughs> yeah. I just get to show up and do what I love every day. I heard he was like the ultimate, like just kind of go with the flow on shit. Which those guys usually never make it. Those like, guys, like like Bray Wyatt, I hear is one of those guys who's just kind of like, hey man, I'm just gonna show up every day because I love wrestling. It's what I do. And with those guys, typically they just go, well, we don't have to push him because they don't, you know, they don't have any other. He doesn't want to go anywhere else, so we can just kind of do whatever the fuck we want with him. Man, you know, for as much as we still like Bray Wyatt on this show, despite all of the shortcomings they've had, but man, it seems like a lot of people are fucking done with that. A lot of their mainstream audience is just done with Bray Wyatt. Dude. Well, they they haven't done anything right with them. That's the thing, you know. A little bit, you know, like like when they did that shit with Roman Reigns where he was he had a room where he was sitting in front of pictures of Roman and his daughter. I was like, oh, you almost got it. You know, like you almost did something interesting. Yeah. But I thought they should have pushed it way fucking farther. But of course they won't. Uh, but, yeah. And do you think he'll be uh, in the WWE Hall of Fame what, next year? Probably. Brian, yeah. I hope so. put him in this year. I They may. They may add him in here this year. I don't know. Since the Undertaker's not going to retire, I guess. Yeah. Every year we're like, have... this will be his last match at Mania. He'll go in the Hall of Fame. Fuck, he keeps coming back. Yeah. As long as they don't have Bree and Duck Daniel. It should be William Regal. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. But we all know it'll be Bree mode. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> yeah, well, I bet it, man. They wouldn't put it past him to do that. Are they going to put the strap on that bitch at Fastlane? I don't think so. Dude, I hope not. Mm-hmm. Her time it's gonna be Sasha be... Banks. It's gonna be Sasha Banks and Charlotte at WrestleMania. Yeah, it seemed weird that there was even this stop along the way. Well, Sasha, Sasha Banks is Banks is hurt, from what I've heard, but not like they don't want to admit she's hurt, but she's not working a lot of like shows. Hmm. Because like that was the thing I was I've been watching Raw obviously, but all of a sudden I was like, how the fuck did we end up in Charlotte versus Brie for the belt? Like I don't even. How did we get here? I don't even understand. So. Ugh. Dude, we're going to have to talk about Fastlane a little bit, probably. Um, but to also put in, to go against what you're saying there, uh, Sasha and Naomi are on a, are in a tag team match on there anyway. So, Or Sasha and Becky Lynch versus Naomi and Tamina. Yep. That's that's on Fastlane. So she's on Fastlane. Well, yeah, I guess. But just from what I was reading, they were having her do less because she is hurt. That's got to so. be the kickoff show match, huh? They're going to yeah. have two women's matches on the main card? No, that'll be the uh, six thirty two commercial breaks in the middle of a pay per view match. <laughs> yeah, great. I guess that's because they showed on YouTube. Oh yeah. I oh yeah, 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 yeah. 
But, I mean, if you don't have the network and you're not going to watch the pay-per-view, we should really go watch that on fucking YouTube. I don't understand. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. I always well, the watch commercials it. always for that shitty breaking ground show. Do you think Baron Corbin's boring on NXT? Watch 10 minutes of him being even more boring in person. <laughs> watch him ride around on a motorcycle and brood. <laughs> <laughs> Watch him literally go bald in front of your very eyes. <laughs> boring Corbin. Fuck, he is the worst. Like I said in the show before, it's like, you know, for, for people who are confused between Baron Corbin and Darren Corbin, well, one of them is a very entertaining, fantastic wrestler, and the other one is Baron Corbin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd be pissed about that. Like, they got a fucking rhymy name. Like, you bastards. Yeah, I'd be a little <laughs> upset if I was Darren, man. Yeah, I would, too. Uh, he just laughs about it. Does he? Nah, that's good. Yep. I think he just laughs about anything. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't take too much, you know, anything too seriously. Right. And also, just a side note, people can check out, uh, if they haven't, I don't know why they haven't, but the Fully Loaded podcast, which is on our channel. This is the first time you've been back since we started that, huh? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I interviewed Darren Corbin the first episode, and then I had Gangrel on for the second episode. A very rare podcast appearance by Gangrel. Go out and find another one, I challenge you. Yeah, he hates doing them. That's why I only got about 14 minutes out of them. <laughs> I still thought it was interesting. I didn't know that yeah. guy worked in Japan and shit. Yeah, it was a fun interview. I mean, he just it was hard to get him to, to open up, but it was fun. Yeah, it was good. Definitely check those out on our channel. Uh, worth a listen. They're both about a half hour long, so... Yep. Nice little listen. Uh, go ahead. What's going to be on the next one here for, for this month? We're going to have Heidi Lovelace on. Heidi Lovelace. Mm, yeah. Our first uh, female wrestler in FLW history. So. Yeah, I saw that. That's, that's interesting. Expanding. Yep. She's going to be on our shows February 19th and 20th in Minot and Devil's Lake. I am not familiar with her, but she's a name that always comes up when people talk about uh, women who should be signed by WWE. She is awesome. Like, she's one of the few female talents that I watch, like, an intergender match, and you actually believe what's going on because of how fluid she is in the ring and good. Yeah. Like, it reminds me of, like, I'm not saying same level of talent, but, like, when Rey Mysterio would wrestle big guys and you still believed it, just the yeah. way he moved, she's the same way. If you book that shit right, you know, booking is a good part of that, too. But, yeah, also the ability to actually pull it off. Yeah. Definitely, so... Yeah, look forward to that. Uh, that'll be what? That'll be uh, end of this month, I guess. Yeah, it usually it's it'll be like the week after the show. Excellent. Uh, and uh, let's fucking uh, talk about. And also, so that brings us to yeah. Speaking of Daniel Bryan, uh, that is our Hall of Fame inductee this week. Yep, I just felt it was appropriate. Yeah, dude. That's what I was thinking. You know, I, I pumped the brakes on the one I was going to put in, and I'm like, eh, either Jim will put him in or I will. So, But, uh, you know, D Daniel Bryan, I feel like I have a connection to, even though I never met him. Yeah. But uh, I was at WrestleMania 30 live. Like, I was in the audience with Aaron, and it was like, I've never seen 78,000 people all buy into one thing in one moment. You could just look at the guy's face, and it, like, overwhelmed him. Yeah. Like, they when they cut TV, and someone must have told him, because he immediately, like, broke down and started crying. It was awesome. Like, he came back out, put the belts back up, and there were tears in his eyes. And then, of course, Bree had to come out and hug him. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and then the next night, I went to that Raw after WrestleMania, and he was out there and afterwards, and he thanked everyone. And you could tell he was like a gen it was like a genuine thank you because he knew if it wasn't for the fans overpowering every show <laughs> with Daniel Bryan, yes, chance, that he wouldn't have been where he was. In all honesty, if Punk hadn't walked out, he probably wouldn't have had that shot anyways. Ryan, you know, and there's a guy too who's like a good guy. Yeah, like, yeah, just a genuinely a good guy. Like, like, find someone to say something bad about that guy. It's I don't think you'll find it. Ryback, remember the, the <laughs> tape yeah. number three where it turns out Daniel Bryan was bullying <laughs> Ryback. Yeah, well, that's great. Though. That's because a guy like Ryback, you know, you can't say shit to a guy who busted his ass fucking for ten years putting on some of the best matches yeah. in the world. <laughs> like, you're just gonna take whatever shit that little guy gives you. <laughs> you know, starting out too, I'm sure it was off, uh, off. You know, he probably they didn't say go ahead and do it, but he did that. Uh, you know, gave a plug for that charity, and the guy's just a fucking good guy. Yeah. So, it's good stuff. Maybe, uh, maybe in 20 years we'll have a fucking, you know, uh, his son or something wrestling. If he's smart, he'll tell his son not to wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> he probably will. No, maybe not. 
But uh, just to go over his credentials as to why he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, not just because he retired this week, but he's one of only three guys to hold the ROH Heavyweight Championship and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Mm. He's uh, He was a uh, New Japan Junior Heavyweight Tag Champion with Curry Man. Oh, dude. Yeah. He is multiple-time PWG World Champion and just – in all, Noah champion everywhere he went he was considered the best worker and uh, Dave Meltzer I think just uh, renamed one of his like worker awards like the best worker of the year is now called the Daniel Bryan award yeah oh. and just to see him live like I got to three times it was like he worked at a different pace he was so fast the TV just didn't do him justice mm. it was insane watching how fast he moved around that ring and how it just looked like he had been like born into the ring and everyone else was just working at a different slower pace than him like he was like three moves ahead of everyone else it was insane him and punk had amazing chemistry like yeah their pay-per-view matches were just some of the best wwe had put out in like a decade it was crazy i believe they're putting out a compilation here on the network of uh, matches from him so that will be excellent and then he had that strong style match with john cena at SummerSlam, that match was one of the most brutal matches I've ever seen. Like, he was actually hitting Cena with, like, elbows. Like, this was, like, fucking New Japan and dropping him on his... Like, Cena dropped Daniel Bryan on his goddamn head like he was, you know... <laughs> yeah. He's fucking Stan Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, dude. Yeah, and, you know, too, with a guy who... Excuse me. Um, doesn't... Dude, small. Didn't have a real physique to him, you know? Just, like... Nope. Had the big ugly fucking beard, like it just all of the things that people would say that Vince McMahon would say will never work. You're too smart. You don't have the body. You gotta shave the beard. You gotta yep. all the things that he went completely against that. And why do they not understand that? Why do they still force guys to go out and read these scripted things when it's proven time and time again that people get over when they're allowed to be themselves? Like that's why everybody liked Daniel Bryan. Yeah, it wasn't because of like how he came out and delivered his lines, you know. Uh, just remember they put him with the Wyatt family though, like to try to. That was really yeah, that was yeah, that was kind of a fucking that was a bunk. But it yeah. led to one of the coolest gifts you'll see online is that when he's sitting on top of the cage doing the yes chant and everyone was doing it with him. Yeah, such a cool image. So I don't know what he's gonna do. I feel like he'd be perfect for a. A face GM kind of thing. You know? Yeah, like a face authority figure or something, you know? Face yeah. GM, dude. Yeah. What a perfect, like, it writes itself for him to go against the authority all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't understand. Like, fucking Mick Foley when Mick Foley was the GM. Magic, oh, man. That was so good. Mm. I miss good G- I miss good guy GMs. Like, yeah. it's yeah. just the, the played out authority, evil authority figures just so fucking played out yeah. they've been doing it since the late 90s man pretty much right i mean oh, yeah. fuck. i mean i guess there's been times and they're like i guess when you had smackdown with teddy long and shit you yeah know, it's gonna be a tag match <laughs> fuck teddy <laughs> <laughs> you must love the current product with all these fucking multi-man tag matches and shit mm-hmm. probably likes it as much as i do <laughs> he's all about it dude mm-hmm. so yeah man that's uh, a good a good induction into the Hall of Fame. Uh, one of the few current guys, you know, as far as like a, he's certainly a new, a new generation uh, person to be in our Hall of Fame. So that works. He's inductee what forty one, I believe. Um, I'm looking. Sure. Five Star <laughs> Podcast. He's the forty first inductee. Forty first. All right. All right. We got enough for the Royal Rumble now. This is as big a moment, Daniel, as when you won those belts at WrestleMania. That's right, you should be honored. All right? <laughs> it is the most prestigious Hall of Fame in all of podcasting. In all I mean, of podcasting. Let's just, let's just fucking remember that. Yeah, let's just get that out of the way so nobody forgets. <sighs> yeah, definitely. So, yeah, Daniel Bryan, good shit. And uh, we'll see what happens, I guess, you know. I'm happy for the guy. Uh Hope we can go be, live his hippie fucking life on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hopefully have a hand in the future of wrestling somehow. Hopefully yeah. one way or another, yeah. Train some guys. Maybe I'll have a son. No, go home and fuck Brie Bella. Yeah. <laughs> which, Not a which, fucking deal, right? Which I, yeah, which I believe is the hotter one of the two. I, I, that's that's yeah. my personal opinion. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're older, we're older men at this point, and it's so the fact that she's not a vapid fucking whore like her sister makes her way more attractive you yeah, know? yeah. 
also not having a bunch of fucking uh, yeah, two giant life preservers like strapped to our chest. Yeah, the the, the lack of fake tits is kind of what you know. It's I really think. weird how that works. Like they're twin sisters and shit, and like you get one who is the complete they're the complete opposites of each other. It's really weird. I know this by watching Total Divas. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I was gonna watch it this week. I watched a bunch of them. But I did not watch this week, so there will be no Total Divas review. Uh, maybe next week. What? Damn you! It's the only reason Jared a... came on, man. Sons of bitches! <laughs> I watched Total Divas for nothing. <laughs> That's Six. right. So did what? what? What's their viewership? Like 1.7 million or something like that? Uh, I don't think their viewership for that is uh, is on that level. But... I think it's like 800,000. Like it's pretty good for E. I mean, it's fucking E. Like I said, it's weird, too. We, um, I guess we didn't talk about it on the show. <laughs> John Cena, hate that fucking guy, but love him on that show, man. Yeah, the little bit I've watched of that show, he is such an asshole, but you just love him for it, because he's an asshole to, you know, her. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, she, uh, you know, she's like, oh, Dolph was talking to me, and, you know, he said he wanted to marry me, and he could give me babies, and Cena's Don't just care, like... Don't care, bitch. He's, he's like, eh, that's an option. Yeah, she can't see me anymore. Sips his wine. <laughs> just like, you don't give a fuck. Yeah. He's like, I'm just going to hang out with my bros that I've been hanging out with years. We're going to play some ping pong, <laughs> drink some beer, lift some weights. You, I don't really give a shit what you do. Well, because he could be with, he could have uh, a thousand vapid whores in a line at his right. house tomorrow afternoon. So I don't know what she thinks she has, you know. Like, really, she's 35 years old at this point. <laughs> he could trade in for a younger model. I'd. If I were her, I'd keep my mouth shut, get that ring on the finger, and, uh, yeah, just go <laughs> and, for and, it. And yeah. don't tell Cena that she went off birth control. Just say, pull the goalie. Come on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> pull the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> like that, yeah. They'll give her an AA down the stairs if he's smart. Yep. <laughs> Wake you up in the morning, baby. With a kick in the tit. There you go. Well, um. Did you see this week, uh, got a tweet from Kurt Angle on Twitter. Well, that was pretty awesome. That was awesome. I saw that, and I was like, good for you guys. Mm-hmm. That's pretty sweet. Uh, you can get your own Twitter or tweets from former WWE stars like Honky Tonk Man, Jake the Snake Roberts, and uh, Kurt Angle by checking out Famous. That's F-A-A-M dot U-S uh, at F-A-M dot or underscore U-S on Twitter. Uh, you can send out t- tweets to your friends, uh, birthdays, anniversaries, job promotion, you name it. All that shit. Uh, famous, it's F-A-M dot U-S. And put Suplex City Limits in the private message section. Help your boys out. What's up? Huh? Commercial. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, that's right. And look at this. I was on last time. You guys didn't have any sponsors. I started plugging you with fake commercials, and now you're getting commercials on your show. <laughs> uh, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for the first, like, right after we post this, like, an hour, like, fell out. Because <laughs> there's a lot of people like that out there. It's really weird. YouTube people get that, too, where it's like, people like, how dare you uh, – expect anything from like ton- for putting hard work into something Listen, you, know? fucker, you better not try to monetize this shit like, you know, <laughs> give me three hours of free content every goddamn week out of your life yeah exactly and pay to put it on the internet for me to get for free yeah, yeah. so yeah send out uh, you know it's a perfect valentine's day gift huh <laughs> yeah, well that's pretty sweet man if you're a big uh you know, you know somebody who's a big fucking Jake the Snake fan or a Honky Tonk Man fan, or, you know, to have them tweet out for their birthday, that's badass, man. That is a select group of people that are Honky Tonk fans. <laughs> oh, I fucking love Honky Tonk Man. His, he's great on shoot interviews. That's probably my favorite part of him. <laughs> he is great on shoots, man. He's getting drunk, smoking pot and shit. He rules. He doesn't <laughs> even take bumps anymore, though. Still wrestles. Doesn't even take a bump for the shake, rattle, and roll. <laughs> but yeah, so check that out. That's pretty fucking, pretty fucking sweet. And we thank them for, uh, you know, helping us out and shit too. So, uh, what do you guys want to talk about, man? Let's address the elephant in the room. The one story that everybody's waiting for us to freaking comment on. We know what this one is. Let's oh, talk dude. about. Let's talk about Titus O'Neil for a few seconds here. Yeah, dude. 
What? I just what? read to this morning that his suspension was reduced. To 60 days. Yeah, but what a fucking crock of shit, you guys. <laughs> Dude, what <laughs> happened? Like, I was like, oh, this must be something. And then I watched it and I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I just still don't understand. Yeah, I don't. It, the only thing I can get out of it is that Vince is deathly afraid of black people. I think that's what well, it is. No, I think what it is is here's this amazing uh, emotional moment. And it's the, it's the extra time on the network. And they had their last yes, yes, yes. And the last thing before it cut out that anybody saw was Titus O'Neil grab Vince and just pull him to the side. And that's, like, all anybody was talking about the next day. Like, it was all over Twitter. That that little gif was all over Twitter that night. And we're just like, Vince probably saw that and went, son of a bitch. That's all anybody's going to remember from that moment. Oh, yeah, it was. And he was, that would make me pissed, too. Like, here's a super emotional moment ruined by Titus O'Neil who grabbed him for no reason reason other than he was joking around like i don't know what he was doing so <laughs> so people were talking about it and shit before they suspended him or what yeah yeah it was why like, well, because I... it was the last like th- that little gif of him grabbing him and pulling him everyone's like Whoa, what happened why do you do that was he mad and it turned out i guess he just was like trying to let steph go through first because she's a woman well vince's What's reaction is what caused it i mean if he'd have pulled him like that and nothing happened it wouldn't have been anything the fact that like vince looked like he wanted to fight him well i said i don't i bet he didn't know it was titus o'neill just somebody grabbed him by the arm and pulled him to the side he's the fucking boss <laughs> i don't know dude but does, yeah, the thing... i'm not saying it warrants a 60 day suspension okay. but, but from what like Meltzer was saying is like vince has been telling everyone to act professional be more professional he's tired of all the the joking around and the unprofessional nature of the business oh, they had just off. had a meeting they had just had a meeting about it and then titus o'neill does that on tv like I get it, not 60 days, but I get why he'd be pissed off and trying to set an example. Just the wrong guy to set an example on, because Titus O'Neil's a good dude. Why would you want to work at that place, honestly? Money, honestly, it's exposure. Oh, no, yeah. That's about <laughs> it. Money, yeah. It would be terrible to work there, dude. Honestly, it seems like the worst workplace ever. Just with all the shit that they hear from her, it's just like, ugh. Even worse than I'd... Konami? Well, Konami's pretty bad, right? <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> But you wait for it, dude. Uh, you know, tomorrow on Raw, you're going to see there's going to be that crowd is going to fucking take over and they're going to fucking do Titus chants all probably all night long. So good luck with that. How many Titus Titus sections are we going to see? Little mm-hmm. signs that say Titus section. Well, none because they'll take those signs away. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I that seems to be what I've heard online. People are like we're gonna hijack the show. We're like well, I've, I usually don't support that. But when it's against WWE, I always like when they have egg on their face. So maybe it's work, guys. Maybe Vince did this to put Titus over. I love when people huh? say shit like that. You know, they're like <laughs> they'll give WWE way more credit than they deserve. <laughs> you know, like well, what if they're doing this? I'm like they're not smart enough to do that. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you watch this shit. Come on. Uh, not. I think my, I think my favorite part about that whole gif is the fact that, that everyone out there is in work clothes, or most most guys are work clothes. And then if you just look, there's uh, there's Tyler Breeze hanging out in jeans and an unbelievably tight t-shirt. <laughs> just like, fuck it, I'm buried. I'm not coming out in any goddamn. I'm not putting on anything else other than what I'm leaving this goddamn building in in five seconds. <laughs> yeah, probably so he didn't wrestle all that night. You know, did he? Yeah. I don't recall. I don't, I don't think, think he, he did. did. I don't think he did. No. Probably did a Superstars taping before. Ugh. That's still a thing, guys. Superstars. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. I don't watch it. I don't know where it's at, though. It's on Hulu. Is that it? Yep. Is it on Why TV? is it not on the network? I think it's on the network, too, but I know it's on Hulu. Cause I, I think it might be on the network, too, yeah. For one split second through my mind, I was like, maybe I should watch this. Nah. <laughs> Who the fuck am I kidding? Wouldn't it be great if their <laughs> shit was actually good? And you did get that much of it, you know? Like, if Raw was awesome, SmackDown and shit. You got four shows a week? Yeah, it right. would be. It would be good, but... I would watch an old episode of Heat over watching, like, a new episode of SmackDown. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> That's true. Oh, Heat was fun. Like, I used to not be able to afford the pay-per-views as a kid, so I'd watch the shit out of Heat and just be like, oh, what? oh, no, come on. I need more. Come on. And, you know, they never actually just let me watch the pay-per-view on Heat. Bullshit. I remember watching, I remember when I was a kid watching, like, the first, they'd give you the 15 minutes free or whatever, the first 15 or 10 minutes free, and then it'd be all scrambled for the rest of it. 
I've watched yeah. a few scrambled pay-per-views, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty much my entire consuming of pay-per-views in the late mid to late 90s was just scrambled pay-per-views. Yep. You could still hear it. And Jim Ross did such a good job of telling you what was going on. It was like you didn't even need the picture. That's right. Mm-hmm. We I used to w- get a lot of them. Yeah. I tried WCW pay-per-views that way, but their commentary was so bad outside of Bobby Heenan that I just couldn't follow what was going on. You don't like Mongo McMichael, baby? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, no. I bet oh. he had that fuck. He had his thumb up that fucking little dog's ass so fucking far. Dude. He's just sitting there, like, furiously fingering that little dog <laughs> under the desk. <laughs> <laughs> and Shivani. I, I don't know how that guy worked for so goddamn long. He was terrible at his oh, job. I like awful. Tony Shivani. Don't give a shit. Sucked. Front kick, back kick there, fans. <laughs> well, he was better early on. Um, by the late 90s, he was like, you know, you could practically see him out there with like a noose around his neck, you know, yeah. and it's like, or he's like getting a gun ready to shoot himself. And it's like, even, up next to this match, Lodi versus. Uh... Even early on, he wasn't that. It depended on who he was working with. Like, he had terrible chemistry with JR because you had two play by play guys. Yeah. You know, but him and, I, you know, it, it, I just I was never a Tony Schiavone fan. Fans, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, one of my favorite uh, teams of all time includes him, dude. Schiavone, Heenan, and uh, the Dream Daddy. No, Dusty think... Rhodes was awful on commentary. Don't, Don't care. <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> they gotta burrow up his butt. <laughs> it's awesome. Bicycle. Who's riding the bicycle? Who's riding the bicycle inside the arena? <laughs> I'll give you that. For comedy, that was a good team. For figuring for figuring out what the fuck was going on in the ring, it wasn't. It's like, dude, you get like a Shivani Heenan and fucking Dusty and Hog Wild all wearing denim vests very uncomfortably. <laughs> like, it was awesome. The only guy who can kind of pull it off is Dusty. Just Shivani in a fucking, uh, in a jean jacket. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Almost as bad as Jim Ross in a toga. <laughs> that was his first work in WWE when he when he it went was. through, wasn't it? How unfortunate is that? Yeah. yeah, your first event you do, and they're like, you gotta wear a fucking dress. Oh, <laughs> for the worst WrestleMania of all yeah, time. Yeah, for the one in a fucking parking lot. It's between that and eleven for the worst of all time. It's between that and thirty-two for the worst. Of all time. <laughs> oh, this year's gonna be bad, you guys. Live from Caesar's parking lot. <laughs> so, you can see the fucking In and Out Burger drive through from where the fucking <laughs> dude the outdoor thing like i said with the super bowl this year is like i'm sorry west coast but you don't get to have things outside that should be in the dark anymore yep the fuck out of here with that i'm like the halftime i'm going to halftime show who gives a fuck i don't uh, even watch well, i was so disconnected from racist, this year's super fucking, bowl. racist white people seem to give a fuck about that yeah fuck show, but that's a whole other fucking deal um uh, but it should have been in the dark it was just like mania was just ruined last year i thought by being in like out in daylight it sucked yeah uh, well you know i think there's a city ordinance you know cause... well then they need to do it in somewhere else i don't give a shit to me right, it's right, to right. me it's a big enough thing that I wouldn't do it like that. Anymore. I think the production of this year's Mania is going to be really good. Obviously, they're in a state-of-the-art fucking stadium, even though it is Jonestown. <laughs> this thing has a roof, right? <laughs> yeah, this thing has a roof, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. So it can actually be dark? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can be dark for The Undertaker's 45-minute entrance. Mm. Who's going to be against, man? Strowman? <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh. They put the Knicks to that right away. That would have been already awful. refused. He's finally refusing things. Yeah. He's just like, are you fucking kidding me? They'll probably like, throw him out there. I don't know. Who, like, yeah, what are they? He's like, you had me wrestle fucking, dude, the Giant Gonzalez and fucking Great Khali. Like, I'm done yeah. wrestling giant fucking guys who can't do anything. Can't do shit. None of those are as bad as Great Khali. I think he's probably the worst professional wrestler of all time. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. Him yeah. or Giant Gonzalez, probably. I remember when we did. Say it's Giant Gonzalez. <laughs> no, no, Khali. I Gonzalez. gotta, I gotta go with Jim on this one. I gotta, I gotta agree. Well, you know, Gonzalez wasn't. He, he, I mean, he wasn't much better. But I, I have to say, the Great Khali. He was even worse when he was uh, El Gigante in WCW. Yeah. Yeah, El Gigante was the worst. At least Khali had like. Four moves at that least, he would bust out. At least, El Giante showed up, hit like an overhand palm strike, and that was the end of his fucking offense, guys. <laughs> at least Gonzalez had fake fur strapped to his dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we were talking, like, if we go back to episode, what was it, episode two, where we do the worst gimmicks? 
Yeah. And I was searching some, and I, I was like, oh, okay, you know, get a little info on the Great Kali. I found a YouTube video. Top 15 moves of the Great Kali. <laughs> Fuck that. That dude didn't have 15 moves in his fucking move set. No way. Not if you don't One count. One of those moves was him moving towards catering. Yep. <laughs> One of those moves was coming down the ramp. Another move was stepping over the top rope. Yeah. Chop. <laughs> chop. <laughs> Backhand Speaking chop. Of horrible gimmicks, I would like to submit Arachnaman <laughs> as the worst gimmick in the history of professional wrestling. I think we, we did touch on that one, too. I yeah, think we, we, did. we touched yeah, on well, that one. Well, because they got sued by Marvel for that. Yep. <laughs> Fucking Jim Turd. Oh. And also, it was one of the Armstrong brothers. I think it was Brad Armstrong. Yes, it was. That was Arachnaman? Yep. 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 I think yep. you're right. <laughs> He's a fucking great worker, man. <laughs> God, could you imagine that conversation where someone had to go tell Brad Armstrong that that's his fucking gimmick? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be a third-rate fucking Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, Jim, Jim, Mr. Hurd, what is that? Uh, it's your new outfit. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> just fucking fire me. I know that's what this is. You just want to get rid of me. <laughs> no, man, you're going to be huge. Kids are going to love you. You're going to be the biggest star in WCW yeah. history. I mean, look at Sting. He goes out there. He's He's based off a singer. You can go out there and you can be based off a comic book hero. Yeah, what do you think was running through his mind like right away? He's like, oh, hey, man, thanks for the pajamas. Uh, (laughs) No, dude, that's your new wrestling gear. He looks like the (laughs) bastard cousin of the fucking (laughs) ding-dongs. One of the ding-dongs was bit by a radioactive spider. Would you say that the (laughs) ding-dongs is the worst idea that that guy ever got to air? Yeah, I got to air, yeah. I mean, we obviously, the worst one would be that, that uh, hunchback. Van Hammer. Van Hammer? Yeah, you really don't like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, he pushed Van Hammer, guys. I mean, yeah. Because yeah. Mm. he didn't have that hunchback idea that never made it to air. Where... Look, I think Jim Hurd is actually worse than Vince Russo. Because at least Vince Russo had, like, a run of being okay. Jim Hurd was awful from the moment he showed up. Yeah, he's probably the worst. Uh, yeah, probably the worst in wrestling. I, I, yeah. The absolute, he's the shits, just the worst. Fuck. I mean, it just sums it up. Ding and dong. <laughs> from Belleville. The ding dongs from Belleville. Ugh. And they have fucking a, bells on their tights and shit. There's a story of uh, Ric Flair told on his podcast about that hunchback and how he can't lose. Yeah. And Jim Hurd was all excited, and then Kevin Sullivan goes, well, I figured out how to beat him. It's a false count anywhere match. We'll just dig a hole into the ground. <laughs> that way his hunchback goes into the ground, and we can pin him. And he said it as a joke, and Jim Hurd goes, well, that could work. That'd be real good. <laughs> and Ric Flair goes, I stood up, threw my pen on the table, and left the room. <laughs> <laughs> fucking amazing, dude. Punchback, tag team. Oh, not only God. would you, you know, not only one, but two. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Oh, uh, yeah, that's good shit. Oh, that's fucking good stuff. You can't beat that. Speaking of good shit. Yes. Boy Loader Wrestling, March 19th and 20th. I'm going to put my plugs in, otherwise Aaron yells at me. Oh, I was going to get to that. I was coming right to it right now. So, in Minot, we have Anarchy in the Armory. At that, we have a Fans Bring the Weapons match between Deicide and Tommy G. Oh, God damn it. That's awesome. You guys hmm. should come for that. Come on, guys. Oh, yeah, dude, we the probably... room's pretty cheap up at the Vegas. It's like... If, if we do, I'm bringing a fucking Nintendo. Oh, do that, yeah. A Nintendo <laughs> for a weapon? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, he's just going to play Nintendo. Oh, he's yeah, just going gonna... to bring a fucking... If you're like, afterward, yeah, we'll play Nintendo. <laughs> 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 he's at the venue playing Nintendo. Did it start yet? <laughs> hey, guys, after the show, a uh, fucking Tecmo Pro Wrestling Tournament NES in our room. Yep. Guys, you would have so many wrestlers that followed you back to play that goddamn game. It's not even fun. <laughs> Wow, well, yeah, fucking you guys con- should come. I mean, the Vegas, they have pretty cheap rooms, so I mean, they yeah, actually have a discounted rate for FLW fans. It's a fans bring the weapon match, so you can bring, like, a cheese grater, uh, like a keyboard from your computer. Fuck, bring the whole computer. No, I just fucking just finished building mine. No way, man. <laughs> bring that orange crush, and you crush somebody's skull with it. Fuck that, dude. You know how much that thing fucking cost me? <laughs> Deicide's the man for that job. Yo. Tommy G, from when he worked down in the South, did a lot of hardcore stuff, too. Yeah, so fantastic. don't put it past him. And then uh, at that show, actually, both nights will have uh, uh, ROH's Silas Young and uh, Women of Honor's uh, Heidi Lovelace will be on that show. Fucking Silas Young. Fucking cool. 
What are the dates on these bad boys? February 19th and 20th, and then you get to see it all. If you don't live in the area, you get to see it all on YouTube on our channel. Nice. Boy Loaded Wrestling. Yeah, it's going to be a good couple of shows. Uh, what, Friday night in Minot, Saturday night in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. So if you're anywhere within distance of that, take yourself a little road trip. Oh, yeah, we got lots of people coming from, like, Fargo and Minneapolis for that uh, Devil's Lake show. So I'm pretty excited for that. There you go. And, yeah, dude, the, the weekly show on YouTube is fucking awesome. Every week you get to, if you, also, you can watch this shit from anywhere, awesome. Uh, tickets available for this bad boy still? Yep, fullyloaderwrestling.com sales. Uh, ringside's mostly sold out at Minot. We might be able to add a few more chairs, but for Devil's Lake, there's a, there's some ringside left. There you go. General admission, only 10 bucks, so it's a cheap date. It is. Bring your lady. Have her bring her purse with a brick in it. With a brick <laughs> in it. <Weapons match. laughs> you never know when you do that. people bring weapons, what kind of shit they might bring. Uh, they will be checked at the door. And <laughs> list of things not to bring. So. Please do not bring knives, guns, yep. machetes, nunchucks. Exactly. I said no blade weapons, no firearms, no chemical sprays. Other than that, we're pretty good. Like. Someone's like, I'm going to bring a weed whacker. I'm like, well, that shit better be battery powered. Yeah. <laughs> weed whacker. Dude. Yeah, it could get, that could get really fucking hairy really quick. You're not CCW. <laughs> oh, God. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah, there's going to be an awesome show. Dude. Silas Young, fantastic. Yeah, he's taking on Mr. Incredible, and that is going to be a very physical match. Very yeah. physical. Mr. Incredible is a badass man who will just punch you in the mouth. That's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, definitely check that out. And if you're anywhere near it, get some tickets, have yourself some fun. Fully loaded wrestling. Um, I think there's one, some news. There wasn't a lot of news of the week. Yeah, it's but since of... I feel like we touched on the two biggest news. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, rumors backstage Braun Strowman to receive a mega push after WrestleMania. Go ahead and chew on that. For is he trying, to, is he trying to get out of, is he going to get a mega push? Is he trying to get out of a chair? Trying to stand up out of the chair. Or yeah, no shit. He is terrible, dude. Yeah, he sucks. Yeah. You know, he's got the look, don't get me wrong, but man, his he's got to be the stiffest fucking worker I've seen he in a long like time. looks like Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah. Every time I see him, I just hear, <laughs> That should be his gimmick. He should not be in the Wyatts. He should come out in a goddamn uh, Letterman's jacket and just beat up nerds. Back in the day when they had jobbers, that had been perfect for him. He just went out, beat up jobbers who looked like nerds, and they, they just tried to start a nerd chant. Instead of feed me more, he just says, nerds, nerds. <laughs> Tell the guys he'd be over his shit. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> why, is he, why is he dressed like fucking, when he finally vanquished the Goldberg chants, he starts dressing like Goldberg. Can anybody explain that to me, dude? The MMA gloves, everything. Fucking Rysack. I just, I don't know. Fucking Ryberg. Feed, feed me s'mores. Yeah. Good God. Uh, former WWE referee uh, and ROH referee fired this week for sexual harassment. Kevin Keenan, former WWE referee, worked for Ring of Honor. Uh, yeah. Fired for sexual harassment. Uh, really kind of going after some chick on there and he spanked her. Or I don't fucking know, so... Uh, I don't know who it is within Ring of Honor that he sexually harassed, but... Uh, How is that still a thing? How do you still think you can get away with sexual harassment yeah. in 2016? Yeah. yeah, Kevin Keenan, you're a fucking piece of work, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I heard it was on Dalton Castle. <laughs> He's a sexy-looking son of a bitch. <laughs> He's the party peacock, I get man. it now. I get it now. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Dalton Castle's, like, he's so attractive. He's attractive to both sexes, you know? <laughs> he's fantastic uh, yeah but you know that's the thing too is like um, some things get lumped in as sexual harassment like <laughs> dude nut sack jokes and shit shouldn't be sexual harassment no. but, but yeah going in and like doing something like that like how do you think you can get away with that shit like you're out of your fucking mind <laughs> I don't know who the guy is like he worked for WWE but uh, no less uh, live Stone Cold's podcast announced with a big show, huh? No. Oh. Does <laughs> anybody care about him anymore? Oh, as we'll see in Mark Tank later. At least one person does. Oh, Fuck. boy. I'm excited. I better go pee now. I'm going to step away for a minute. How are there big show fans? I, yeah, I know. 
I will be skipping that fucking episode drop. Well, I say that, but I'll watch it. I, yeah. The only ones I skipped was like Stephanie McMahon, and uh, I couldn't take that page one either. Yeah, I only got about halfway through that one, and I was just like, I have trouble understanding her. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I agree. Dick caught the accent. Like, fuck, I don't do a good British accent, but you get the idea. Right, yeah. And, dude, something's going to happen with Strowman at uh, Mania, I'm telling you. Maybe he wins the Andre the Giant fucking... Oh, yeah, I suppose. Unless they do... And that'll really the... catapult him like it did Cesaro in Big Show. <laughs> WWE hires major PR firm to represent Stephanie McMahon. What? Uh, yeah, they uh, helped what? promote her... As the company's chief brand officer, they hired the firm to push McMahon as a friendly public face for the WWE. Is there a more bullshit title than a brand operator? I'm the head of brand operator. Just shut up. Shut You got a cushy job because of who your dad is. The first appearance that the new firm landed for her was her recent Good Morning America appearance. What? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the firm is also aiming to get McMahon recognized for her charity work in the same way that Dallas Cowboys chief brand officer and EVP Charlotte Jones Anderson is. I've never even heard of that person. Yeah. So you know what you want to do? Dude? If you want to go do that, stop playing a cunt on TV. <laughs> just get off she TV. She seems like a bad person. Like, I don't know. I don't know no, why. She is. I'm sure she is. She seems like... It, it, if you have to hire a PR firm to convince people that you're a good person, chances are you're not a good person. <laughs> well, she is Vince's daughter, so. Ugh. Yeah, how about that? Ugh, with a side of ugh. Mm. Yeah, I can only imagine her on Good Morning America, what that was like. <laughs> God. Oh, that, I'll watch I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it smelt terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch Sunny Side Up for this show, but I will not watch Stephanie McMahon. Like this morning in America. I have standards. <laughs> exactly. God damn it. I have journalistic integrity. Um, former commentator, ring announcer, and creator of ringclassics.com, Mark Nulty passed away from cancer this week. You guys familiar with him? Uh, can't he say. Uh, was a commentator in Joe Blanchard's Southwest Championship Wrestling as a TV host and ring announcer. He worked for World Class for a while. Uh, so I can't yeah. picture him, but I imagine I know who you're talking about. He was a ring announcer for other promotions and also provided commentary for Ring of Honor DVDs. He uh, hosted shoot interviews and stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, he passed away from cancer. He's an old guy, so but no less. I don't know exactly who he is, but we'll give him a shout, right? Godspeed, sir. Godspeed. Uh, man, I guess, you know, I, the MSG event that's coming up here before Mania, uh, they have, let's see, they've, what are they here? No, I guess they don't. Oh, that was a fucked up, uh, that was a fucked up, uh, the MSG, story. Uh... I hope it just doesn't do what Chinese MSG does to me when you eat a bunch of Chinese food and almost give you a fucking stroke. <laughs> the MSG Network. <laughs> the MSG uh, Network. Is what it is. It's planned a WrestleMania 1 special that is going to air. We don't get that channel, but... Um, yeah, they also do have that event coming up in March, right before Mania, a house show, I guess. Uh, which they haven't done one of those in a while. They had that Beast in the East one, and when was yeah. the last one? There is well, one. I think it was the MSG one. Mm. Yep. The MSG one that they did, like, no throwback stuff on because they lack the vision. <laughs> they did, you know, it was like, cool, they could have done something old school with that, and they just, like, didn't. The Fink should have announced it and shit. Yep. Bruno San Martino should have at least made an appearance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right. Captain he, Lou Albano still alive or no? I think so. I don't think so, dude. You don't think so? Yeah, I, gonna... I think I heard uh, it'd be nice to bring him back. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> but if if I, if he's still, alive, I believe man. bringing him back is going to involve some shovels. So. Some sh some shovels and some necromancy. Yeah, he died in two thousand nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can right. they can borrow a shovel from uh, HS. Yeah. He's got a couple <laughs> extra ones here. Let me just go under the ring. Uh. <laughs> uh, I already talk about the backstage heat on AJ Styles with uh, Vince McMahon. People saying he does that he's have heat with Vince McMahon. At that's this true. Point. People saying he's hard to work with and shit like that. So I suppose guys like The Miz are like, he's hard to work with. He actually knows how to wrestle. 
<laughs> this is bullshit. This guy actually gives a fuck about wrestling. Yep. That's, How dare he? That's and too bad. He, now he's going to get fucking shuffled into obscurity. Well. Because. Oh. With 50 50 booking, he lost to Jericho here on SmackDown. I didn't watch SmackDown, but. Uh, as I said, journalistic uh, integrity. Um, but so people, he loses his first match, and immediately people are like, "You're being buried." I'm like, no, he's just he's just the fifty-fifty booking man. Yeah. Don't use the B word. That's one of the most overused words in all of fucking internet smarkdom. Buried. No. So, kids want to talk about fucking Raw or what? Oh my god. Ah, uh, skip it. Let's just get to the Valentine's questions. We already covered all the cool stuff from Raw. <laughs> yeah, we did. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I've been waiting for, actually. Let's get what to the What did we one. cover on? <laughs> the retirement speech. Yeah. That, Come on. Yeah, there was that. You don't fucking need it. Move on. Let's do the Valentine's questions. <laughs> <laughs> She's hijacking the show. All right. So, Moving on, uh, sir. <laughs> let's see. I get my, uh, let's get these up in front of me here. My method for this is probably the fucking the worst ever. Oh, oh hey, I did want to bring up, I finally watched an episode of Lucha Underground. Like, all the way through. The first episode of the season was the only one that you put up a link for. Because I don't get the El Rey Network. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. Fuck yeah, you should watch episode two, and, well, we're going to spoil the shit out of three for you here. But oh, that's yep. fine. <clears throat> Dude, like, get the on. Only thing I, the, like, like I told you, I think we talked about this on Facebook. The only thing I didn't like was, like, the seven-minute intro. That yeah. was just unbelievably over dramatized because none of those people can actually act, and yet you're putting them in. You know, I get it's a telenovela, but Jesus. I thought that act. shit with um, Vampiro, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. But. Well, but one thing I'll say is they have a vision. Like, everyone else is trying to be WWE, they're not at all. Right. right. That's the only way to succeed in this world on national television up against WWE is to not be the WWE. Right. So, and they certainly are not. <laughs> right, yeah, I thought that, too, they handled, um, you know, a, a female and male match could have been really fucking touchy. They, I thought they handled it awesome. Yep, I thought that was handled. awful. Yep. The main event after she won the triple threat, that was awfully, that was awful. They yeah. only really had the crowd believing for, like, two seconds she had a shot. That was not, it was not good, in my opinion. That was the only no, thing that felt I agree, me. but if you're squeamish about, like, violence against women, it was pretty gra- I thought it was graphic, at least. Yeah, it was. It was gritty. I, it wasn't good wrestling, but it was graphic and it was fucking gritty. It seemed like fucking choking her on the mat and shit. Like, wow, that's pretty intense. Also, uh, real quick, I thought King Cuerno was King Carino, and I'm like, oh. why the fuck is Steve Carino in Lucha <laughs> Underground wearing a mask? <laughs> that's how I actually heard them say King Cuerno. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> Ignorance of Lucha Underground is going away. Bueno is great, dude. That fucking yeah, Diaz and shit. Yeah, they have, they, have a, they have a lot of talent on that roster. Yeah, that's that's for sure. So this week we asked uh, listeners and to uh, submit Valentine's Day questions on Twitter, uh, and we got a few. <laughs> we got a few back that are pretty fantastic. Um, our friends at the Put Em Over podcast asked, see, they're smart, right? They're like, if we ask a question, then we're going to get a plug. <laughs> pretty fucking, pretty clever. At Put Him Over. If you're, uh, or isn't that not, is that not their, oh, that's weird. Anyway, <laughs> uh, if a girl wants you to put her in a tombstone, 69, should you be reluctant to keep talking to her or rush over to her house? <laughs> Depends on how big she is. Right? <laughs> I was going to say, I- this depends on my upper body strength. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good chance this is going south with a very specific body type. <laughs> this is one of those things, like a standing 69 is one of those things you see, like, in a porno, and you're like, there's no way fucking real people do this shit, nope. dude. Mm-mm. There's no way that people got off work and ate dinner and fucking put their kids to bed and then go do a standing 69. <laughs> God damn it. Well, honey, what do you want to do tonight? <sighs> I don't know. I just want to, like... I'll put my legs on top of your head, and then you just power lift me. <laughs> yeah, dude. I always figured, like, that's how a guy like, uh, you know, Dolph Ziggler would fuck your girlfriend or something, you know? So that's Dave Batista, like, Kelly Kelly type of shit. That's about the only people that can pull that off for any period of time. <laughs> Dave make fuck. Dave <laughs> make fuck good. You know he destroyed that girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I guess, man, if you feel confident in your ability to, uh, to fucking hold a broad up... 
<laughs> By all means, dude. <laughs> you get over there. Also, even if you can't do that, you get over there, you try, and then when you fail, you start offering other shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, you gotta have a backup plan. Right. Get in the door. That's all, you know, yeah, get, get in your there. Foot, get your foot in the door. You don't have to do it. You don't have to pull the move off. Like, as you're walking through the door, pull a hamstring. Just grab, oh, <laughs> shit, I'm so ready. Ah. <laughs> Yeah. I can do this, and then oh, I blew my knee out. Let's just let's just get on the bed. It's just a, just a general, just to give us like some general Valentine's Day advice from your buddy Jim Vicious here. Always go down on her first. Always finish. Give her give her one finish with the mouth first. That way, it, no matter how fucked up the rest of it goes, at least at least you fucking set a good bar. You know what I'm saying? No. Very true. That's yeah. Sound advice. <laughs> yeah, that sound. Too. No. No. Yeah. Get her off with your mouth first, and that way, wait, if it wait. goes to hell, at least she got off. On Mom, do me a favor. Turn off this part of the podcast. <laughs> Skip ahead. <laughs> Should have said that about two minutes ago. She's probably right now. She's probably like, "Fuck it, damn right." <laughs> Just, Retweet. Let's, let's face it. Yeah, like, let's face it. Your mom fucking wishes that she got one by the mouth first. <laughs> Oh my! Whoa! I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! I, I would hope she doesn't listen to the show. This, I don't know. This <laughs> gross show where we talk about just awful human beings. Oh my god! Yeah. Saying terrible things about. I think it was last week we talked about yeah throwing Mrs. Carriages in the trash can and shit. So. Yeah, it's a gross. This, this show is disgusting. Let's face it. <laughs> we do um, put a disclaimer out there for that. Yeah, that yeah. is. That's what I say to anybody who has a problem with anything that happens in here. Is, dude, there's a warning there. Listener discretion is advised. Um, Tom, the I don't know, listener of the show, and uh, he he asked preferred finish on Valentine's Day. You first, them first, or mutual count out. <laughs> I prefer well, to, I prefer to have a dusty finish. <laughs> brother, bro, brother. Dude, I always go over first, man. Yeah, dude. All right, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> I always go over, brother. You know I get you think you're getting over, but I'm always getting over first, dude. I'm always getting that count. <laughs> Well, if they go over first on me, I'm st- I'm doing the Hogan. I'm sticking around in the ring till the end anyway. So. No yeah. way, man. If she thinks she's getting there, I'm kicking out at two, brother. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know what the dusty finish is, but it's but the idea of it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where she fakes it. That's where she fakes it. That's the dusty finish. <laughs> that's where, like, you think you make her come really hard, yep. and then afterwards she tells you she didn't. Yep. <laughs> she <does. Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I you can't do the dusty finish. As long as you're not doing a match with color, you know. I guess. I'd go <laughs> you know. I don't. Uh, I don't do. I don't do color. I'll take this moment to give a shout out to my kids. Guys. <laughs> they don't listen to this. You'd be a terrible parent if you let your children listen to this show. <laughs> There's like I'll see sometimes on Facebook or Twitter where there's some fucking some kid'll comment and it's like they're not a kid, but they're maybe fourteen or something, and I'm like, Oh, you listen to this show? Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? There's porno jokes, fart jokes. This is their demographic, my friend. <laughs> yeah. This is a highbrow show, man. <laughs> it's highbrow stuff, guys. Uh we could sit you know, I guess we could sit and be like, uh, you know, talk all serious about fucking you know, shit, but why would we want to do that? So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess the goal is always a, well, I guess you'd say a mutual account on, but, but I say you put them over first, man, like I said, my advice there. Agreed. Always, make always. Two out of three falls. Always yeah. make sure that they, they, they get happy first, because just in case, you know, you just, yeah. you, know, you never know what's going to happen if, you know, something's going to slip out and go somewhere it's, it shouldn't be or they don't approve of, you know. You know, things can get a little wild afterwards, you know, so. Yeah, even if the core fucking sucks, at least she'll be like, ah, oh, at least they're, you know, at least I got that out of the deal. I feel like you leave, you know, you set a good, a good bar for, uh, for approval there. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, she'll, she'll, uh, she'll be able to, to forgive you if you accidentally dolphin her. I was, trying, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> I was trying to think of other other finishes, but I can't think of any offhand. Other weird ones like the dusty finish. <laughs> as long as it doesn't end like Hayabusa. Distract- oh god! Distract- yeah, the Hayabusa roll finish. Up. 
<laughs> Get another distraction roll up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one's actually considered sexual assault, guys. Distraction <laughs> roll up. Did you shut the Did you shut the oven off and then just yeah yeah distraction roll up is that what you is that what you like she's Fred been, runs in starts yelling at her and you just get from behind one two three done she bends over to pick something up off the floor and you just sh- run up and shove it in <laughs> yeah. is that what a distraction roll up is you could you could have her bring a friend over and you could have interference. <laughs> yeah, running. Yeah, the running. Yep. There you go. <laughs> the distraction roll up might also be uh, when you just when you don't sell when you know sell that you're about, they're about to come. You, know, <laughs> you just like room bust it off, and that, that could be a distraction roll up. Mm-hmm. That'd be a fast count, maybe. Oh yeah, there you go, fast count. Yep. <laughs> just, <laughs> I love the idea of no sell at a fucking orgasm. That's great too. <laughs> oh, there's so much gold. <laughs> There's so much gold in these mines. <laughs> oh shit! Oh fucking a! Always going over, dude. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a pretty good question, man. Uh, let's see what else we got. <laughs> I he commented on here, so I I expect that he intends for us to read this on the air. Uh, your fellow. Uh, for, fucking co-owner for Fully Loaded Wrestling, Aaron, asked, how many different instruments can you guys insert into Jared, <laughs> and how much will I donate for it? <laughs> I think I think you'd be shocked at the amount of things you could insert in me. <laughs> instruments? <laughs> I think we'd want to start off with, like, a flute, probably would be the first, you know? You know, trombone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you know, we're going to gradually work our way to the trombone here. I'd probably start with, like, an oboe and a clarinet, uh-huh. and a flute. Fucking cello. Fucking tuba. <laughs> French horn. Oh, I want to put a marching band in your ass. <laughs> that is the worst. That'd be the worst pickup line to ever try at anyone. I'm going to put a marching band in your ass. What does that even mean? <laughs> a, it doesn't even sound sexy. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what's happened. That's the thing is, like we said, um, a week after they first debuted those um, those fucking horns for the New Day, it was like, oh, we're seven days out from the release of these, and you know already people have put... Those have been in butts and vaginas already. <laughs> Are you talking like, about the unicorn horns? Yeah. Yeah. Within a week, by the time we recorded our show at the end of the week, you know, like, how many butts have those things been in? Bunch. How many emergency room visits has there been? Could be quite a few. I mean, do you wear it on your head? Like, you could, wow, yeah, you could. And you could do the old, yeah, the old. Uh, uh, fuck, how can I forget his name? Um, they strap a dildo to his head. <laughs> you could. Uh, and they're ramming you, chicks with it. What the? What the hell? Oh, uh, Billy Kidman. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, if you got it on all fours, you could, uh, you could lick it while you stick it, man. <laughs> <laughs> So the Valentine's Day show. <laughs> Happy Valentine's this Day. This is romance. <laughs> day is the fun. Get with it, people. <laughs> Make your wives listen to this episode. This is relationship <laughs> advice. Oh, there is a little bit of relationship advice in here. Let's go. Let's go. No, there's that one. Oh my God, this is some. There's some absurd things here, man. I I guess I had said you know send in some absurd shit. Uh, Michael, listener Michael says, since Steph likes it rough, is that been determined? I don't know. Is it public knowledge that stuff likes it rough? I don't know. He uh, he asked, "Do you think that Triple H should uh, get her doggy style and beat her from behind with the world heavyweight title?" <laughs> do you think he spanks? I basically will take this. As, do you think that Triple H spanks Stephanie with the belt? Yes. Like the world heavyweight title belt? Yeah. That'd be fucking unwieldy. <laughs> It'd be hard to swing. I feel, I feel like you couldn't get the snap yeah. that you'd want. On that belt. Oh, no, no, you could. No, Michael, that's not what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Her ass is just, just covered in doubles, Ws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you'd have to use one of the ends, like with the where the buttons are, where they snap together and shit. You just have to use one of the ends there. Oh, yeah. you get that swinging pretty good. It'd be unwieldy. I feel like I already know how those two have sex, and I feel like he probably has to wear the belt and wear a fucking blonde wig with a mustache. 
<laughs> like, you know, I feel like that dude would try to dress his wife up as him so he could finally fuck himself. Because he's yeah. one of those dudes. Like, he's it'd be like it'd be like the movie. Us. Uh, it would be like scary movie when he has his girlfriend dress up like a football player. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Agreed. Yep, 100%. Put on the this first... uh, one, two, three kid tights. Uh... <laughs> Be the first time he puts someone over. <laughs> ah. But that's... Yeah, that's fantastic. He, he strikes me as a kind of dude who, like, who fucking jacks off looking in the mirror and shit, you know? <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, we yeah. decide on how many instruments we were just going back? <laughs> Five. Three. Three? <laughs> a flute, an oboe, and a clarinet. That's my suggestion. Where's the ukulele in all of this? Oh, Jesus. I'm playing it. <laughs> <laughs> in a grass skirt? Are you going to be in a grass skirt as well? Well, obviously. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Just, that, there's a mental picture for you. <laughs> oh, man. How come I can't think of any Tiny Tim songs right now? I know. I was trying to think of that Tiny Tim song, too. <laughs> I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't think about it. Uh, Kat, uh, listener Kat from Germany asks uh, why the hell do people think one fucking day of the year would be enough to keep their relationship alive <laughs> that's, a fair, that's a fair question dude get two bitch get your anniversary and your valentine's day stop <laughs> demanding so much of us <laughs> it's, no, it's, the same sort of, it's the same sort of logic that WWE has that one night will save the whole fucking company as in Wrestlemania yeah, yeah. That's true, man. I, I just, uh... <laughs> My wife and I don't even celebrate Valentine's Day, so... Oh, you're lucky. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> this does not apply to me. Let's move along. I, I don't, uh... I don't feel like I, it's something that you would want to encourage, um, you know, scheduled fucking. It's not... It's probably not good for your uh, relationship. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, if you have to, like, schedule, like, mark a day on the calendar, so you're, you're, not, you're not doing it right. Right. Ugh. But Valentine's Day is kind of a bullshit deal. But what can you do? Yeah, well, you know, hey, February fifteenth, seventy percent off the nice, chocolate. It is nice, though. I'll, I'll say this: it is nice if you're a very busy person to go. You know what? I should pay attention today. Yeah. Something. You know, I just trying to help here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got you. I feel you. <laughs> but yeah, if that's the case, then yeah, your relationship's probably dead. Um, uh, Grim Reaper. Uh, at Reptide 1999 asks, favorite ravishing Rick Rude moment? That's some, I get the Valentine's Day connection there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what, uh, the most memorable thing for him is like when he had uh, Jake's wife on his fucking tights, man. Yeah. <laughs> right? Or, or when he came out, was it him in the riot gear in ECW? Was that how he debuted? It like is. He took the riot gear off. That was a cool moment. That was a cool moment. But beyond that, I mean, like, I can't really think of any cool... Oh, you know, the best moment was uh, Ravishing Rick Rude fucking hitting that German suplex in, like, 88 on goddamn Warrior and made Warrior go for the goddamn ride. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Just dropped him on his head. Like, when this I, is New Japan. <laughs> when I was a little kid, uh, we used to watch all the pay-per-views at my uncle's house. And I remember, like, all the ladies would go, my grandmother and... You know, my aunt, but they'd, they'd, they'd be in the kitchen where women fucking should be. No, just joking. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. Jesus. <laughs> just joking. Uh, but they'd be in the other room, and when, when fucking Rick Rude would come out, they would all come out to the living room when Rick Rude came down, dude. He was so, not that, he wasn't even a tra oh, I was the 80s. Everyone was hairy. Oh, Come dude, on. he is fucking, yeah, dude, he's very fucking, it, it worked, man. Because, like I said, they would always come out. And that's the only wrestling they'd watch is, like, when Rick Rude would come out and do his little intro and shit. Yeah, I'll, I'll say it, that when he hit the German on Warrior, when no one was hitting German suplexes in America, it was a really cool moment. That is cool. So, yeah, and Rick Rude is from this part of the country. Well, and then Warrior no-sold it. <laughs> because oh, yeah. you don't sell a German from Rick Rude. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. Exactly, man. Um <laughs> Was he one of the first ones to bring? I guess I never thought about that. That's pretty cool. He was, uh, like, the Steiners were doing it before him. But, like, in terms of WWF, I can't think of anybody that was hitting Germans. Like, yeah, full-on yeah. release Germans where he was just, I mean, he threw the Warrior. Warrior got some height, and then Warrior just got right up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rick Rude. <laughs> Anthony, uh, listener Anthony Shepard, asks, 
which base is two in the pink, one in the stink, also known as the shocker where I come from. Uh, first, second, third, or home? He also has possibly an in-the-park home run. <laughs> that is an error triple. The outfielder tried to throw it to third base, <laughs> well, threw it to the ball got dirty. Oh, I was, <laughs> I was gonna, I was no, gonna. That's, that's magic. I was, I was gonna say, depending on the lady, it could be a rundown between second and third. <laughs> you could get yourself in quite the pickle there. <laughs> Both those are acceptable answers. Just you running back and forth until you get fucking tagged out. That's right, yep. Oh, yep. dude, I like the air at triple. That's, that's, yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. There's no... Uh, all went all the way to the backstop and got dirty. Yep. <laughs> got stuck got, under the wall in the got, park. Got, got stuck in the dugout. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Shout out to you, Anthony. I got actually one of my friends, Tom. Is call that... Tom, but his name's Anthony, yeah. Oh, that is one of your friends. <laughs> That's great, man. I didn't know that question beforehand, but yeah, he told me he'd submitted one. <laughs> <laughs> also, while we're doing shout out, shout out to a uh, fucking listener and amazing supporter of the show, Casey. It was his birthday yesterday. Yes. Happy birthday to you, sir. Happy birthday, brother. <laughs> if you will. Uh, Caitlin asks. What are some ways to turn your man on besides grabbing his dick or getting naked? I saved this one for last because I thought this one had the most meat for us to. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <I'm> just fucking. <laughs> uh, oh, but yeah, man. What? What, uh, what do you got? What do you got on that, man? You're enough. Just show up. Yeah. We don't need anything else. Just be yep. there. <laughs> yeah. If you're breathing, don't I'm turned on. <laughs> anything else? You just have to show up. That's it. That's all you gotta do. You just gotta show up for the game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would say honestly, dude, if if you feel find that like you're having issues with that with your dude, maybe you should get a different dude because uh you know, come on now, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> if you one of those guys you hear about that shit, like guys who like sit and play Xbox and shit instead of uh instead of boning. Like I like Xbox, I play Xbox, but dude, that's not I mean like, but you really want to axe her box, am I right? <laughs> but you give it the <laughs> Hope you don't get the not... red ring of death on that one. Yeah, if getting naked with your old lady is not on the top of Just your... Just get your red wings, wings, man. <laughs> if that's not on the top of your priorities, you know, I don't know what to tell you. You may be, uh, you may have some issues there, so... Yeah, they might so my have. advice there is, you're enough, all right? <laughs> you got this to yeah. show up. If you, if you have to, like, convince this guy to fuck you... Just move on and get some, find some other right. dude because there's plenty of guys out there. A pound, a pound of cooked bacon also helps. It doesn't hurt anything either. The bacon. I don't know if I want to fuck after a, after a heavy breakfast, man. Well, no, that's why you save that for later. Oh. You save that to after. That's to the dessert. You want, you want to get the main course out of the way. <laughs> bacon is the dessert. Yeah. It's definitely fucking uh, a show. Depending on the lady there too, you might have bacon while you're getting the deed done. Bacon drapes. Bacon drapes? <laughs> what the fuck is going on over there, Rando? <laughs> I think you were at my you were over at my place uh, hanging out recently, Rando. And we were talking about that uh, that porno, well, that picture. It's just a picture online that floats around, and it's like a fat guy chugging a can of cream corn while fucking a good chick. Right? Yeah, yep, yep. And we were talking about that, and I was like, she fucking won't let me, she won't do that shit at all. I look over, and she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, you want to give me a blowjob while I eat spaghetti or something? <laughs> <laughs> Which, that's the only other thing I saw of that, was uh, Buddy had, like, a compilation video back in the day, and it had a fucking fat guy eating spaghetti while getting blown. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to focus on either properly. Uh, you guys well, I, te really well, I tell you what, I had a, I had a I had a girlfriend. Uh, this was a few. Uh, this was many years back, actually. But but uh, she she decided to do that while I was playing a game of Madden. Mm. Yeah, not bad. I had to call a few timeouts. <laughs> <laughs> call a timeout. Just call a challenge, just for shits. <laughs> Just stop the clock. Yeah, stop the clock. <laughs> out of bounds, out of bounds. <laughs> you guys really don't want to talk anything about Raw. <laughs> What's there to really talk about? I mean, yeah. we touched on well, it. Well, then you have some kind of Valentine's Day-related uh, thing for us this week, Rando. 
Oh, I had I had some horror stories. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's talk about. I, you mentioned you're like I have a Valentine's horror story to talk about, and then I tried to remember any Valentine's Day I've ever had before this, and I seriously couldn't think of a single like. I have no recollection of any Valentine's Day. Well, I bet it's not so much a horror story, I guess, but it's just it's it's a shitty deal, no matter which way you look at it. But yeah, I've I've been dumped on Valentine's Day before after after the whole you know the routine that everybody you know does for for their lady. And let's you establish know. too on this that you've told some interesting stories about your uh, dating life, man. My, my dating life, like yeah, being it's got woken a lot of... up to a chick who is in the middle of the night is fucking uh, sprinkling holy water on you and shit. Yeah, going around my apartment sprinkling holy water. Oh fuck! <laughs> what did I get myself into on this one? Uh-huh. But no, yeah, I just got—I got a shitty Valentine's Day story. Let's hear it. Well, I mean, you know, you, yeah, you're you're dating this gal for I don't know, probably what uh, six weeks, I think, prior six weeks, maybe okay, two months. Okay, let me prior. just interject here. Never once, like, if you're single, take January and February off because you never want to be in that awkward like just started hanging out with somebody and then quickly it's Valentine's Day. Right, right. But, you know, I don't think I overdid it or anything. You know, I just you know the regular dropping a couple flowers off at their work and then go out at night and then yeah on the, <laughs> on the ride home is you know after the whole deal after the dinner and everything after after my wallet's a little bit lighter a lot lighter you know and then on the drive home that's when she decided to break it to me so basically i just pulled over to the side of the road and they're like well you obviously don't need to fucking ride home the rest of the way so get, 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 this, get this stepping <laughs> What's that, Jared? Hero. Hero. <laughs> she deserved that. She deserved that. Yeah, she Not did. all heroes wear capes. <laughs> <laughs> did you really fucking stop and drop a bit? Yeah, I was. Made, I wasn't. Very, I wasn't very far from her house, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> Should have drove past her house. Just kept going. Just, just, kept, her. just a little bit. Just a little bit. Drive out to steal or something. Well, here you go. <laughs> well, what did she say, man? She's like, no go on this? Yeah, I get. Yeah, yeah. That's After basically you what took her out to eat and all this oh, shit. Oh, the whole fucking works. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, that's bullshit. After, after pissing my bed, even, too. So that was that the same cool. one. Yeah, that was the same one. Holy shit. Yeah. That's when I pull out the receipt from the restaurant and go, listen, bitch, you came for half of this. <laughs> We're going Dutch. We're going hey, Dutch oh. on this. You should yeah. have sent her an invoice in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Fucking one salad, nine ninety five. Nine, yeah, I don't even remember what we ate that night. Honestly, I don't remember where it was. This was years back. This was this was years ago. So that's a, that's pretty shitty, man. Yeah, it is shitty, but whatever. I can look back on it and laugh now. It's all good. <laughs> I just die a little inside every time I think about it. That's all. It's, you know, it's it's yeah. cool. Just bury it down. And you just... know, yeah, just bury it until it comes over boiling one day. And I <laughs> no. You know, you know what I really hate. You know, you, you know, you grab a bottle of shampoo and it says damage control, but when you use it in the shower, you're still broken on the inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so there were there are a couple of things I have to touch on on Raw. I'm sorry. Uh, How dare you? Interesting. Adam Rose defeats Titus O'Neil. Before that happened, I thought that was interesting. I thought that's why he grabbed his arm, like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> What's your deal, man? Uh, and also, dude, the Dudley Boys turned heel on Raw. That was cool. Well, I think they're they're a better heel team. Yes. How long has it been since you heard an ECW chant? Been a little while. Yeah. So I thought that was all right, but yeah, I mean, there was really, for the most part, I didn't think this was like a criminally bad episode of Raw. But it wasn't good either, obviously. Right, right, right. Uh, I heard, speaking of the Dudleys here, I heard that they're not going to be using tables anymore for their gimmick. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, just It's like the anti-hardcore Mick Foley when he was in ECW. It's like, uh, to, be, to get over as a heel, you have to not do the thing that gets you cheered. Yeah, I suppose. There you go. Oh, yeah, I suppose, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, like, really, they actually got way more of a pop as heel than they did as face because that's what I like the Dudley boys. I like them as fucking assholes, you know? My favorite yeah. era of that is, like, yeah, where he almost, where Bubba almost starts that riot in ECW. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking cr- the heat wave incident. Yep, yep, yep. 
<laughs> he's on like fucking that bitch spits in his face and shit. Like, holy fuck. That's crazy heat. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there really wasn't much else to it. Dolph Ziggler beats Kevin Owens. Do you see he kind of did what I was saying last week on the show? I'm like, he, Kevin Owens has been losing a bunch. And I'm like, I'll only take it if he's going to do uh, the Jericho crybaby gimmick. And it almost seemed like that's what he's doing. Yeah. He threw yeah. a tenter, temper tantrum afterward. I'm like, mm, we've seen this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing else. Bray Wyatt defeats Ryback. Del Rio and Rusev defeat the, the newly reformed Lucha Dragons. I don't know how long that's going to go. Obviously, as uh, we have to watch fucking Del Rio and Kalisto again. Mm-hmm. And I usually like Kalisto, but man, Del Rio is just... Yeah. Del Rio sucks, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, everyone was excited for him to come back, and it just didn't work out. No. He was good. It hasn't worked out. He was great in Lucha last year. Yeah, he was. I wonder what the fuck happened. Oh, Vince. Never mind. Did you know that that whole um, Mexican Americans thing was? They were contacted by the Mexican government. Oh, really? Saying because I guess there's like pretty strict rules down there about how you use the flag. Like you can't just like take the flag and you use it on shit, you know? Right. So to have it like cut in half and then sewed together with the American flag, I heard they were not happy about that. <clears throat> but I mean, it was obviously shit anyway, so they were probably just bailed on it. Because why the fuck wouldn't you? Yep. <laughs> Garbage. That's the problem. I mean, they brought him back, and they just wasted it with all of the shit. Mex Americans into this league of ordinary jobbermen. Fucking terrible. I like the nation of desperation better. Yeah. Well, you can do that, too. <laughs> uh, NXT this week. Pretty boring. Dude, NXT's really kind of been boring. Yeah. Boring Corbin. And yeah, other than their takeover shows. Yeah, it's pretty much. Boring Corbin goes over Johnny Gargano. Sad days. Mm-hmm. They just use Gargano and Ciampa as, like, fucking... as meat. <laughs> but it helps those guys out, too. You know, you get, you're get being seen on that. I'm sure that's helping their bookings, their indie bookings. So, good for them. Both those guys are fucking good, too. Uh, <laughs> the Dude Bros. Beat oh boy. Hollis and Skyler. You know, Hollis and Skyler. Yeah, those guys. They're my favorite tag team. <laughs> the fucking dude, bros. Alexa Bliss and Cameron. This match, dude, if there's anything I'll say, go back. Go back and watch the worst fucking match of the show. There's a clothesline in there that is just... The selling of the clothesline in this match is beyond words, man. Just just terrible. I can't believe they've paid that, that chick money for as long as they have. She's been around for years, that Cameron chick. Can't wrestle at all. No. Why no. do they pay her? I don't understand. Qu- quotas? Oh. <laughs> 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 Elias Sampson. <laughs> and Jesse Sorensen. Uh, why is that name really familiar to me? He was in Sorry. TNA. Oh, is that what Jesse Sorensen was? Yeah. Oh, is that the guy I said this looks like, um, like fucking WCW 1997 wrestler? I think so, yeah. Yeah, that is. He's got, like, the arm tattoo and shit that uh, Vince likes. Yeah, that's right. That is that guy. He looks, just like, he looks like every guy in the death days of WCW that was, like, huge and jacked and you know, didn't know anything about him. They had no personality. They're just, like, a dude in trunks with a big tattoo on their arm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. The Drifter. And then Bailey and Carmella. Meh. Meh. God, Carmella sucks. God, mm-hmm. she does suck, dude. What the fuck is she? Oh, because she's Bailey's friend. Right. And they have to wait until the Asuka match where Asuka kills Bailey. Right. Asuka comes out at the end of this. Well, I mean, the whole thing. Fucking Carmella's going back. She gets attacked by Eva Marie and fucking. Nia Jax, then Asuka comes out, and so I mean you're getting that Asuka Bailey match at the uh, takeover. The takeover, so it's, it's the only awesome. two good workers they have left on there. Female yeah. workers. I mean, who would you put as a third? I mean, Emma can work. Yeah, Emma can work, but I mean, other than that, That's about it. 
that I've really been paying attention. I haven't really paid that close of attention, but yeah. And Emma needs another good person to have a good match. Emma had one of those yeah, like lists. That's like Charlotte. Yeah, exactly like Charlotte. We like, like Charlotte can be really good, but she can also stink up the joint. Right. Depending on who she's in with. We were lulled into a false thing with that. We're like, oh, this chick can work. And then you see her work like the shitty workers on the main card. And you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah. And then you wonder if like even Sasha could get a good match out of some of those, the chicks that Charlotte's had to try to make look good. Oh, dude, just wait for this, you know, for this weekend with Charlotte and Brie Bella. Oof. Oof. It's going to be bad because Brie Bella is fucking terrible. You know, I guess if... if Daniel wants to open a school. Fucking dude, how about starting with teaching your wife how to wrestle? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you know, really, this it's all in the can for them all the way up until April, and it's just very slow and it seems fucking lazy. Oh, it is, it's lazy. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It is lazy. So well, next... they don't have they don't have a whole lot to work with either, though. I mean, you got half your fucking roster is hurt. Yeah. Ah. On the next to you. Well. Oh, they have a lot of injuries in NXT. Yeah. yeah, it's affecting them too. Uh, the more interesting event, I think, next week, and we kind of talk MMA a little bit here. Uh, I feel like this one's certainly up our alley. Bellator 149 next Friday, February 19th, on Spike. If you're an old school fucking MMA fan, this is the kind of fucking sideshow that's just for you. Ken Shamrock versus Hoist Gracie, dude. Isn't that tonight? That's tonight, isn't it? No. Are you sure? Yep, it's February 19th. They oh, had a okay. preview show on. Last night. Last night, yeah. Okay, all right. But yeah, the main event is uh, Ken Shamrock and Hoist Gracie. Holy fuck. How yeah. old is Hoist Gracie already? He's 50, 50, 52, I want to say. Yeah, still younger than Stan. I actually was over at a buddy's house, and we thought it was because we saw it on the fucking thing, and yeah. and uh, so we watched it, and like, oh, it's only a basically an hour long commercial. But yeah, I think they said he was fifty two years old on there. Yeah, people say. can say whatever they want about fucking sideshow MMA shit. I am fucking dig it, man. I dig it to see the voice crazy and Ken Sh- Ken Shamrock is shit. He's been shit for fucking ever, but. Uh, it's not the last time we'll talk about Ken Shamrock on this show. Um, and then Kimbo Slice versus Dada 5000. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, yeah Dada 5. It's basically uh, somebody who, like, stole fucking Kimbo's entire gimmick, except for, like, he has a crazy shaved... I don't know. I don't know how to explain him. He looks like he looks like a cross between Mr. T and, and Kimbo Slice, basically. Kimbo, Kimbo Slice? Slice? <laughs> We're the exact same thing. <laughs> exactly, dude. Yeah. Mm. Great mind, sir. Great mind. <laughs> oh, man. And yeah, I mean, Mel- Melvin Gillard will be on that show. He's kind of an older guy. Dude, I-, I love that shit. You know, like I said, there's something to say for UFC. I watched that last fight night they did last week, and it was whatever. Like, okay, yes, the top guys going against each other is something, but... There's also something to, like, old guys like Mirko Krokop or something. Right. Just put Mirko Krokop <laughs> against a guy who sucks at defending head kicks and just let him go and kick his head off in a minute, and I'm happy. I'll pay 50 bucks to watch that. Uh, I just, uh, to, to see Ken Shamrock still attempt to do anything knowing that he's just concussed and probably has, like, a form of dementia just makes me sad. Can you believe that these guys got licenses to fight? Oh. Where the fuck did they have to go to get him licensed to fight? Okay. Is this Take, happening in Thailand? No, no. Take a guess. It's in America. What's your first fucking thought? Philadelphia. No. Come on, no. <laughs> what? Philadelphia, they wouldn't even let Rocky fight there. Rocky fucking... <laughs> oh, oh, come on, though. <laughs> I thought it would be pretty obvious. Texas. <laughs> ah, shit. Yeah. yeah, I suppose. There are no fucking... There are all no rules in Texas. Oh, man. I think it's going to be fun, though. It's next Friday on Spike. Free. Can't beat that. I'm fucking stoked for it, dude. I can't wait to see the Gracie train, man. Like, that'd be awesome. Fucking always Gracie. You think, okay, all right. Let, no, let's, let's, let's get... Um, you think anybody's going to get hurt in this? You think one of them old men are going to get fucking hurt? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. That fight that Kimbo Slice had with Ken Shamrock was... Uh, a lot of... Some people were trying to say it was fixed. I don't know about all that, but I I heard I didn't watch it, but I heard that there it looked like it was. I watched it. I don't know. It's hard to say. 
I mean, he if it was, he didn't do it very well because Shamrock got his head split like wide fucking open in that dude. Well, he bladed, dude. Come on. He bladed. <laughs> he <laughs> bladed. He yeah. <laughs> Did he fucking knock his eyeball out of his socket like a few of them Kimbo fucking fights? This is an elite XC. <clears throat> yeah. You know, come on. It's this all is, work, brother. This is Bellator, not elite XC. It's all <laughs> work, dude. <laughs> all of it. I remember watching Kimbo when he was doing them backyard fucking fights. Yeah, when he was knocking fucking dudes' eyeballs out of their heads on yeah. fucking patios and shit. Yeah. You watched that documentary on Netflix about that that little area where they do those street fights behind like in people's backyards. There's a documentary on Netflix about it. And it's some crazy shit. Like yeah. the, the, the the amount of stuff that they go through to not be found out by the cops, and yet they always get shut down by the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Why, dude? Why not just go to the well, legit? They get, like, 300 people to show up to these events, and they try to sell it. Like, they, they hand out flyers, and, like, barbecue is in quotes. Don't <laughs> 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 make out of barbecue, and it's in quotes, and they put up, like, these trash bags to block the fence, and then they have, like, guys posted at the end of the street for when the cops show up. It's and so these true. guys get, like, they, like Daniel Bryan S seizures from some of the punches that they receive at these goddamn things, and they get paid, like, eight bucks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. God damn, dude. Get a different hobby. Yeah. Well, it worked for one person, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Kimbo's fucking awesome, though. I'll watch that guy fight people. I don't give a fuck. I don't care how long it is. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, to go back, um, just to build on that a little bit, Gracie and Shamrock. Uh, Gracie beat Shamrock at UFC 1 in 1993. 57 seconds via Rear Naked Choke. Yep. And then in 95 at UFC 5, they had this uh, that super fight, and it was god-awful. It was a draw, 36 minutes. Fucking garbage. 36 minutes of their bullshit. I remember watching, I think it was that one, UFC uh, 5. Because they run a tournament, but then that's like a super fight along with the tournament. Right, 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 um, yeah. Because they used to only do them once a year way back then. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, so. so, there you go. Uh, dude, who touch on this St. Valentine's Day massacre that was suggested we watch? Dude, I've seen some of this shit before, but dude, blue dust? I had no idea. I had no idea that that was actually a thing. Horrible. Fucking horrible. There's only like one good, a couple good moments though. The Rock and Mankind always had great chemistry and they have a very good last man standing match. Yeah. And then Al Snow versus Bob Holly was really good. I don't know, man. I don't know if it's like I'm not entertained by that kind of shit anymore. But I watched that match and I was bored as fuck by it. I don't know. That was really good. That was well done for what it was. The general consensus is that it's really good. So I don't know if it's like because I'm older now or what it is. I don't know. I mean, I thought it was interesting. It ended up in the river and shit. And then Vince almost dying, <laughs> taking that bump off the cage where he like had to be taken to the hospital after the match because it fucked with his kidneys. Dude, that is fucking gross, man. He had that bruise that went from, like, the top, like, the base of his neck all the way down to his ass. Like, oh. Yeah. This is why, this is why you shouldn't be doing this, you 50-year-old man. Yes, that's why 50-year-old men do not belong in a restaurant. Untrained 50-year-old men should not be <laughs> taking bumps off of a cage. In the main event. Yep. For the number one contendership for the WWF title. <laughs> that blue dust, Matt, blue dust versus gold dust, that was only two minutes and 32 seconds long. Oh, yeah. It was oh, the theatrics fuck. beforehand made it even more brutal to have to watch. Can you really? believe that they fucking... Yeah, it was I can't believe they even brought Blue Meanie in. That's interesting, you know? Well, yeah, he was... Yeah, they did put him in the job squad there for a little while. Well, I remember they? him being there, but I don't remember him doing the blue dust thing. I don't either. I like, vaguely remember that. It's like that triggered. That's why I had to go look it up here because once so you much said of the that, attitude era sucked. Yeah, it did. I mean, yeah. it was the hottest moment in wrestling history, but fuck, it was just some of the. I remember uh, Bradshaw being a cunt and fucking smashing Meanie's fucking nose in that all in the ring brawl. Oh, oh yeah, that. Yep, yep. I remember that. Yep. And then Stevie Richards getting revenge later, giving him the receipt on that. Fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> JBL's a cunt. Uh, as I said, I, I made a meme this week. It was like, I'm not, what the fuck is, I'm not a fucking idiot. I just play one on TV. Because I watched, the, he had his, uh, 
the Legends with JBL was with Ron Simmons this week. God, I, I hate jibbling bits. <laughs> <laughs> Just hate him. That's what they should have called that tag team. Jibbling. <laughs> Jibble and grits, huh? Jibble and grow. <laughs> That's genius. Just don't let the Ron Simmons touch me. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I just one thing I was surprised by with this was the pyramid. They showed that building, and I was like, "What the fuck is this, dude?" Uh, that you know, take a guess what's in that building right now. Nothing. Cattle auction. No. no. Car sales. Used cars? I don't know. Bass Pro oh, Shops. Hold on. A Bass Pro Shop? Damn it. I was going to say all the on file lawsuits from sexual harassment cases from Jerry the King Lawler in Memphis. Where <laughs> 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 they're stored. Yeah, it is now called One Bass Pro Drive. And there's a fucking, yeah, a Bass Pro Shops in there. Hmm. Pretty fucking ridiculous. Uh, it hasn't been used as a sports entertainment venue since 2004. And then in 2015, it reopened as a Bass Pro Stop megastore. Which includes shopping, a hotel, restaurants, a bowling gallery, archery range, and outdoor observation deck. That just sounds cool. Like, I'd go there. We're I've, gonna... been down to, I've been down to the one in in, uh, in St. Louis, or, uh, Springfield, Missouri. Those things are, are pretty fucking cool, actually. Those big ba- Bass Pro Shops. I just vision rednecks going there for their fucking honeymoons and shit. Oh, dude, they got, like, the, those big, huge fucking alligator gar that they fuck. Those big fucking... Oh, they're, like, the size of, I would probably say, size of a small shark. They got them fucking things in, in aquariums down there. They got all sorts of live animals in those things, man. It's That's fucking... Cool. Yeah. Those I, things are nasty looking. Fui. I just thought it was interesting, man, that, like, that this fucking... I, I had no idea that building fucking existed. Uh, it also hosted the Lennox Lewis-Mike Tyson fight in 2002. Huh? Is that the one where he's going to say he's... I want to eat his children? Probably. Uh, okay. But, yeah. <laughs> it's really like, it's interesting that like that ends up being a Bass Pro Shop in a pyramid. It's just very fucking weird. Back to the <laughs> show. Like, Luminati. I was more interested in the building. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> What's that? I was more interested in the building <laughs> than the, than the <laughs> actual than the actual event inside of it. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, while I was watching, I'm like, oh, what the fuck? I'm like looking up shit about the building and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's a couple of fucking nonsense there. Shamrock, of course, was in this. Um, you know, one thing I will say is I give credit to Shamrock for making that transition from MMA to... He did Rose. really well. He did. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he made that transition pretty well, and he's he's not bad as a wrestler, man. No, he was a pretty over, like, babyface at the beginning, and then they ruined him by turning him heel and then trying to babyface again. It just didn't work. How hot is that chick who plays Ryan Shamrock? <laughs> Jesus. Um, I mean, yeah, dude. <laughs> I wish we just saw some of the dark matches. Huh? Viscera and Test, huh? Woo, barn burner. Two minutes, dude. Tearing down the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, going through Big Boss Man and dude Midian. I was like, oh my god, I totally forgot about that. F- fucking Phineas Godwin. Midian. Phineas I Godwin. Get it? It's pig. <laughs> what was the other one? It was Hog. What was this yeah, one? Oh, God. Henry O. Godwin. Oh, God. Oh, it's, it's a pig and a hog because they're fat. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, yeah, and Owen Hart here just three months. I was like, wow, man, this must be like three months before he died. Yeah. Bummer. Tag teaming with Jeff Jarrett. God damn it. <laughs> uh, going back, young Mark Henry in the house. What do you guys think of D'Lo Brown? I, I was kind of sort of like weighing the relevance of D'Lo Brown. I was like, I didn't like guy... D'Lo. Yeah, I think he wasn't that bad, right? I mean, aside yeah, from breaking was... someone's neck and shit. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I, I was just gonna. I was. I had a witty joke for that. <laughs> Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> Val Venus and uh, that was with Shamrock. I thought that was okay. Val Venus, I think that's a great gimmick. It was a fantastic gimmick. It was. I think gimmick. I don't know. I thought it was awesome. It was pretty good for a little while. <laughs> the little promos he would do it was always a good time. Uh, 
they also fucking piss me off with this because you get the oh you didn't know and I'm like yes and then it's just Billy Gunn the special guest referee I'm like no <laughs> Billy Gunn in like a little fucking half shirt speaking of which too on NXT one of the ass fuck twins was wearing a like the not even a belly shirt dude but like it looked like a bra like the tiny like just covering his pecs and I was like what the fuck are you doing it was like a Van Hammer to go to bring this back to Van Hammer. Remember when he would wear shit like Why that? Why does it always come back to him? <laughs> <laughs> Is he one of your least favorite guys? I've heard you talk shit on him before. Oh, he's so bad. He was so, so bad. He was like, one of the worst workers I've ever seen who got pushed. <laughs> he's like one of my buddies. He really hates, like, he has a clear consent most hated band and it's dire straits like that's for you that's van hammer of wrestling huh fucking van hammer jesus <laughs> not even in the flock huh no nothing about the flock was good i hated raven too uh, oh yeah i like raven i'm gonna catch a lot of heat on fucking twitter for that because uh he has so many fanboys but raven sucked i'm sorry always always he's just he's never wow. I never liked this. It was this whiny. Vo- what about Raven? Oh fuck you! What about you? You suck. <laughs> I, 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 I oh. oh, he couldn't work. Like just because you can like take a chair shot to the head doesn't mean you. Oh no. Mm. We're gonna have to d- agree to disagree on this one. There you go. Uh, what, what, what was what was better to you, Jared? Was it was it Raven or was it Johnny Polo? Oh fuck! He was worse as Johnny Polo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his, I think it's his voice. I think yeah. it's just, it's something about. I just I hated him. Okay, so Raven or Van Hammer? Raven, obviously. <laughs> 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 Fuck, obvious. Uh, <laughs> Corporate Kane in China defeat uh, Triple H and X Pac. Yeah, I just can't believe we still have to watch Kane. Yeah, shit, yeah. Right. and Mark Henry. And Mark Henry, yeah. yeah. And Triple H. Oh, God damn. <laughs> yeah, here's the Mankind in Rock. That was good. And you know, the Austin and Vince McMahon. He could have fucking died on that. that. That is a brutal bump. God, this show this show showed you just how over Austin was. Like, he cut a promo in the middle of the match, and everyone was so excited. Like, if that happened now, if Roman Reigns grabbed a microphone in the middle of the match, everyone would just leave. Well, of, well, yeah, I mean, you can't talk at all, so. No. Suffer he was lost. It was so over when that glass broke and that crowd, like that yeah. pyramid, like lifted off the ground from the amount of sound coming. You know, yeah, seeing it, like fuck. Yeah, dude, he was, he was more over. I mean, that's that's pretty much accepted, right? The most over wrestler of all time, Stone Cold yeah. Steve Austin. I mean, yeah. I would For, say like, yeah, three years. Yeah. He was the most over guy, and in like '99 was his peak, and then he got hurt. Yeah. It's crazy when you think about like how he got there, man. What a fucking interesting thing. To come in as the ring mask. It's proof again. Bring a guy in and make him do something, and it's not worth a shit. Let him be himself, and it's awesome. Yep. Why do they not do that? I have this theory that they fear anybody getting over that big again. They fear... Because they lose him. Yeah, they almost fear making a guy, giving a guy as much as they gave to, like, Stone Cold and The Rock and shit like that. Because if you get him too big, you're going to lose him, yeah. Yep. So they don't. That's happened to them, and that's how they feel. And well, at least Vince. And yeah, they don't. They don't want to do that. It's fucking interesting. So you keep everybody kind of not over. You know, all it's, it's very. So, so it's an interesting philosophy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, to say the least. Uh, I just had a couple of fucking Mark Tanks this week. Nice. Uh, let's see, some of these are. Oh, also, I wanted to uh, wish. Uh, you know, congratulations, Whitney Houston, four years of sobriety. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's inspiration, inspiration to everyone. Hang in there, Whitney. We know you can yep. do it. Yep, yep. The times can be tough, Whitney. That's right. Mm, we're, we're such terrible fucking Yeah, people. that was really bad. <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, she, she, was, she was so good at what she did that her daughter followed in her footsteps. <laughs> It's not you know. It's not every day that you your children get to follow in your footsteps. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's right. Oh, be be a great mo- be a great role model for your kids out there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God. That is dark. That was dark. Shout Just out to remember. Pastor Mark. <laughs> Just remember, kids, if you're gonna do a pile of coke while you're in the bathtub, 
Take a snorkel. Yeah, dude, that's what I said. Like that's what we learned. If you're gonna party in the tub, take a snorkel, man. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good fucking advice. Uh, <laughs> so Mark Tank this week, some random ones. Fuasa au Fale, Filia, whatever. Can you have Big Show, Ryback, Ambrose, and Reigns tag team against the stupid Wyatts? They're such bullies. <laughs> Well, it's, I mean, funny. Is, is this person? Is it, yeah? Is this person eight years old? Those guys are bullies. <laughs> uh, Mike Kilmer, Big Show is another underutilized wrestler in WWE. Uh, oh, is he? Is he? he oh. Dude, oh, if he could just he? get a push, man. Oh yeah, yeah. If you ever get that push. Oh, this young up and coming guy he just needs that moment that you know, right. one spot to shine. A lot of fire in this youngster. I love that picture of uh you know, it's a picture of fucking Triple H in a suit in front of like a fucking and then it's like Triple H the wrestler, you know, it's like he introduces the newest uh, WWE star. <laughs> it's just just him. It's fucking awesome. Uh the only fucking the only push the fucking big show needs is is a little bit of push towards the catering table. Yeah, those are comments on. Um, those are on Steve Austin podcast having big show the next time. Uh, on the topic of this as well, Jim Kegel. This one is more just because of the way it's spelled, and you know, I read them as they are. I think you should have good old Jim Russ on your podcast next time, and Mick Foley. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just thought that one was good. Jim Russ and Mick Foley. Oh shit! Mick Foley. Remember when he Foley off the off the cell? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Drifter Elias Samson because there's some comments on that. Uh, Eddie Kahn says, I love his gimmick, like a Jeff Jarrett, but with a smirk like Seth Rollins. <laughs> oh, God. What? <laughs> yeah, dude. Eddie, you're an idiot. <laughs> He's like Jeff Jarrett, but with the smirk of Roman Reigns, more so. Wow, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> if he is a drifter, oh, this guy actually makes a good point. He's kind of a good dick comment. If he's a drifter, why is he still with NXT? He should have been gone, gone by now. <laughs> David Bankston, props for that. I've always nice. thought that interesting and like wrestling wants to be seen as like a legitimate business yet you have like these Samoan savages and these drifters that somehow get through HR <laughs> like could you imagine the Samoan hit squad like in an HR like oh, no, no, no. <laughs> just filling out W2s and shit <laughs> like, they're at a sexual harassment seminar <laughs> Marcus just tipping over tables, like punching people with his thumb. Oh, that'd be great, man. Drifters just hanging out in the back, like he can only be here for like ten minutes, and he's gotta be moving on. What do you think about like old gimmicks, though? You know, like what about a guy like uh, like a rack the man? Rack the man <laughs> was in a goddamn HR meeting. <laughs> they got a W two for him at orientation. Like, fucking, how about Adam Baum is about to look at the contract and he puts those big glasses on so that he can read. <laughs> yeah. well, welcome to uh, welcome to Ted Turner's. You know, this is uh, Ted Turner Broadcasting. This is TBS. Uh, he was okay, Adam Baum yeah. in WWF. No, no. I just want to say it's a real pleasure to have you, Rack the Man. If you just want to go ahead and sign your name right there. <laughs> My name's Brian Anderson or Armstrong. God damn it. Was it Brian or was it? Uh... I thought it was, uh, fuck, there's so many of them now. Brad? I might just start making Brad, up, yeah. Yeah. Brad. yeah, Brad Armstrong. Brad Armstrong has a fantastic fucking dropkick. How does he wreck the man? <laughs> <laughs> he come and throw those streamers out of his hands, you know? No, oh, yeah. <laughs> On the topic of Elias Sampson, Elaine Ravelo, I like his gimmick and look. It can evolve into something. Maybe like a dark Jeff Jarrett. If you carry an acoustic guitar, are you Jeff Jarrett? Is that the deal? Yes. Uh, oh, somewhere yep. Honky Tonk Man's going like, fuck, man. <laughs> I think I could carry an acoustic guitar. I'm just waiting. Like, you know, they're building to him using that acoustic guitar. Finally. Yeah, that'll be their big thing. We're like, oh, this is going to be so good. When he finally uses it. He gets his WrestleMania moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Darren Rux says they should slip it to something like he's an accused serial killer. What? That's when he became the drifter. Because right now it's not working out. <laughs> he's a well, he's... serial killer. This guy's wanted and he's on TV. I don't... 
<laughs> like, what the fuck? He's wanted for murder. Welcome to WWE. Yeah, right? And you got... Do you have a criminal background? <laughs> like, after he gets the pin, one, two, three, like, police come down and... <laughs> yeah, like a fucking Benny Hill episode. Yeah, <laughs> chase him around the ring and he'll go running up the ramp. <laughs> terrible. Oh, fuck, right? That's pretty terrible. Um, dude, this one's probably my favorite of this. Uh, this is going to be the last of the Mark Tank for the day. The Markiest of... The Mark of the Week. Huh? Kareem Allen. I like this gimmick. I would like to see Elias Sampson and Baron Corbin team up. <laughs> okay, first off that. And then call themselves the Lone Drifters. <laughs> you can't have two people be lone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just the idea of Jesus. These are real people. Uh, just the idea of taking those guys up is like, oh my god. Uh, I haven't finished counting to ten yet. I haven't finished breathing slowly and counting to ten quite yet. For my response. A lot of people are saying he looks like Macho Man. He kind of does. Don't he kind of has that uh, mid nineties. Uh, but his mustache is crooked. <laughs> mid nineties beard. <laughs> Damian Sando and Macho Man like Love Child. <laughs> Fucking terrible. Oh fuck! Really? <sighs> Did you just read those? Were those real? You made them up just now. <laughs> oh, no, those are real people. And you know where I get all that shit from the Mark Tank stuff? And now I also want to say, I don't know why we weren't doing this before, but you can submit uh, Mark comments to us. Just tweet them at us, uh, at Suplex City Limit, hashtag Mark Tank. <laughs> and we maybe we'll use them on the show. Um, that would save me having to spend 45 minutes of my fucking life wading through WWE post comments trying to find fucking Mark comments <laughs> for the show. <laughs> Chick walks out of the yesterday and like, what are you doing? <sighs> Hating my life. I spent yeah. a half hour looking for fucking dumbass wrestling comments on <laughs> online so I could talk about them. Oh, dude. And let's uh, go through Lucha Underground and get the fuck out of here. This is a long... It's always long when we have you on here. Sorry. Because we're having a good time. Yeah, right. time flies when you're having fun. Oh, dude, I haven't eaten today. I'm so hungry. Oh, I know. I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta fucking wait for my groceries to get here. That's right. I ordered del- groceries for delivery. I suggest it, man. Change your life. It uh, does work. It, it, it is handy. I agree. Five dollars to have your groceries delivered? Yeah. yeah, as long as they don't send the eighty-year-old guy up here when I order like fucking. Yeah, that makes me feel bad. Because he is. You've got it from what? Cash wise? No, I get mine from Dan's. There's an old guy there too. Yeah. I get mine from Cash wise, and it says elderly guy. And I live. Ca- Cash wise is delivering too now. Fuck, they're a lot cheaper. I'll go through there. Okay. Then I won't feel so bad because then instead of three hundred dollars, I'm only spending two hundred dollars. Yeah, and it's <laughs> like, dude, this guy's old. I live up thirty fucking stairs, and I order fucked up shit, dude, like a twenty four pack of fucking diet root beer and shit. <laughs> like, dude, carrying twenty four packs up there, like, oh my god. It's hopefully it's a young kid, and then I don't feel bad. Uh, but let's talk about Lucha Underground, uh, the highlight of the wrestling week, at least for us. Sorry, not for you, Jared. Uh, uh, FLW TV is the highlight of the wrestling week. Oh, uh, that's true, it is. <laughs> On YouTube. At YouTube, Fully Loaded Wrestling. God yeah. damn right. Get your spots in, because the show's almost over. <laughs> got anything else you want to promote? No, yeah, I'm good. Cookbook got... coming out? <laughs> uh, I got a one-man show in the works. <laughs> <laughs> should do one someday. Uh, dude. So it opens up the debut of Cobra Moon, the new uh, female wrestler. She's what'd you uh, think? Snake. I mean, she's I yeah, know. she's a snake. Yeah, Chul thief snake. I don't know. Against Bengala, which I the fucking dig Bengala, uh, even though he's gotten fat and he's not as good as he used to be. No, yeah, he's. Yeah, I don't he think that chick was very good, dude. I didn't think she was very good either. Yeah, I, I thought I thought she was not good enough to be. On the mm, show. So. No, 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 no. Especially if you're just going to get a chick in a mask. I feel like you could have got a way better worker than her. We'll see. She was also working with a little fucking guy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
I don't know if Bengala actually is class would make the the midget classification, but he's a tiny little dude. He's, he's a short fella. Yes, he is. He's awesome though. I fucking I was I popped to see I popped for a tiny Mexican man in a fucking tiger mask. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that says. <laughs> But you have to rethink your life choices with that one. This one, <laughs> Jared, you have comments about, like, the weird backstage shit. This one has, like, a flashback to when, like, <laughs> thousands of years ago? What? Ancient tribes, dude. Oh, fuck's sake. Dude, there's a child in furs drawing, oh, glyph- dude, drawing glyphs in the dirt. And, like, a shaman is see, there and shit, talking see. about tribes at war. <laughs> see? See what I tell you? The show. Uh, what the fuck? I love it. I think it's great. I, I see. Either you like it or you don't. I think the uh, the more absurd and like crazy it gets, because it's supposed to get fucking batshit this year. I I love it, man. I, I welcome it. What did you think of that shit, Rando? I thought it. Was, I thought it was pretty. It was, it was a little bit out there, but I like Aerostar. Yeah. So why yeah. Not? The only way to, that the the tribes are at war and must be united, and the only way to stop what is coming. Is in the form is the form of man, and out of the darkness, dude, Aerostar with the lights on his shit. He like, you know, of course the rocket. He like he's got rockets in his boots. <laughs> he's, he's got rocket feet, dude. He takes off, dude. Yep. Yeah. And there's, st- I I did I did giggle a little bit when they did the special effects. Like somebody's just off screen with like a sparkler. <laughs> oh, it's great. And yeah. then, it, like, it goes up into the sky and, like, is like a light, like a UFO flying away in the night sky. I'm like, this is, this is wrestling. This is... <laughs> like I said, the more absurd it is, the more I'm in, the more I'm just like, this is great, man. See, do you see how, I mean, this just goes to show how much WWE has damaged us. <laughs> Not that I'm saying that it's bad or anything. Because the action in Lucha is is top notch. <laughs> it is. Uh, oh fuck! Wasn't gonna bring up. Uh, wasn't there something absurd? Oh no! Last week we had the. Uh, I was gonna ask Jared what he thought about the. They debuted uh, Justin Gabriel as uh, his new gimmick. The gimmick he's been working on the Indies. You familiar with that guy? Yeah, yeah. The like the dire wolf or whatever. The, the, the dare wolf. Dare wolf. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, dare wolf. Yeah. yeah sorry, d- dire wolves from. Uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think he's he's a great worker. I just I don't get the gimmick. Like he's a lone wolf. Yeah, I don't know what that's dangerous supposed... things. I don't know. Yeah. And his uh, like little vignette, he fucking gets off a motorcycle and beats the shit out of the luchador guys who are they're on, they're on motorcycles too, and they're wearing a one dude's wearing a helmet over a luchador mask and it made me fucking crack up. I'm like that's that's fucking awesome. I wish I could wear a lucha. If I could get away with wearing a lucha mask every day, I probably fucking would. Was <laughs> that for a Mark comment for you? Yeah. Now you get shot by a police officer nowadays. You do yeah. that. Uh, then we had the, the debut of this season of Jack Evans, who, dude, Jack Evans is fucking fantastic, man. You a fan of him at all, Jared? I don't. I haven't seen him. Oh, yeah. He's been bouncing around the indies for, I mean, he's like one of the first guys to, as far as like, push that crazy style. Um, but yeah, he's pretty old. He's older at this point, but a lot of like. Maybe I've seen him. I just, I mean, Jack Evans, what a. Uh, yeah, right. Generic name. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's Not true. a lot of charisma in the name. That's for sure. But he's great, man. He plays a great heel. Um, he basically comes out. He takes the shit on Lucha Libre. <laughs> you know, but as, as far as like high flying, man, he's he's fantastic. A lot of people think he's one of the best heels uh, going out in the Indies right now. And he went against uh, against Drago, who dude, fucking awesome. A guy who's a dragon. Yes, please. He uh, popped him right oh, in the ear. Fuck, I just looked up Jack Evans. Yeah, okay, I remember him now. <laughs> yeah, he's a, just, he's fuck. great, man. He's a guy who I just he's gonna go down without ever having any mainstream. You know, exposure, and it's just unfortunate because he's so fucking good. Mm. Unless WWE picks him up or something, but I doubt it. He's small. Uh, I don't seem to mind that so, about that so much anymore. It's true. They'll, they'll hire you, whether they'll do anything with you. Because he's working AAA and then Lucha Underground, so. But he's a uh, he's an American Canadian, maybe. He used to team with Teddy Hart back in the day too, so. 
We all know fucking the Teddy Hart. <laughs> yeah, I, I only know Jack from watching him in uh, uh, PWG. He was in uh, wrestling. I think he was on uh, some wrestling society X. Which, if you hate, I bet you really hated that. <laughs> was not a fan. Eh, I kind of liked it. It was okay. I mean, it's just like I don't know. Again, uh, going different and like at this point, it's like just doing something different. I'm like, you've Correct. got me if you're trying something else. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Even, I saw like uh, dudes dressed like monsters wrestling in a ring with uh, little tiny buildings in it, and I was like, huh. <laughs> That's something different. Maybe not that far, huh? <laughs> Dudes wearing monster costumes that are completely inhibiting to their movement. <laughs> Genius. Uh, the vignette for Tejano, so he'll be back next week. I like that guy, too. He's pretty fantastic. He's a good worker, yeah. The youngest uh, AAA champion ever. Long Longest rating, wasn't it, too? Yeah, longest rating as well. Uh, the last Luchador standing. This match was fucking awesome. Yes, it was. Phoenix and King Cuerno. Uh, yeah. Again, I think their match again. of the year so far. Better, so, yeah. yeah. Better than any WWE match this year, I would say. Some awesome spots in there. Some ladders, some tables, some madness. Off the fucking top of the office again. Yeah. Another one of them fucking spots. God, I guess kind of. Three quarters of the way up, I guess. That's cool still... about that is like the arena lends itself so much to crazy shit. There's all kinds of places you can jump off of, and that's pretty fantastic. And then at the end, this was the best part. I fucking popped like a little girl. I was laughing. You found was... out that Cortez Castro, who was one of the guys from the uh, what the fuck was the name of that group? The crew. The crew, wasn't it? The crew. And one of the guys from the crew last year is actually deep in cover. For, like, the FBI or something. <laughs> Which is like, what the fuck? Yep. And uh, he gets introduced to his new partner in walks, Joey fucking Ryan. Wearing the big aviator sunglasses and sucking on a lollipop. <laughs> fucking fantastic. So, yeah, we're going to be Joey Ryan as a sleazy cop. God damn it. That's fucking... God damn it. What a fucking perfect gimmick for him, huh? Yeah, I thought it was good. They're only... And then, so these guys, their mission is to bring down Dario Cueto. Yep. So that's what's setting up for this season. I think this is an engaging fucking story, man. It's it's interesting. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a problem with, with them going fucking crazy because it, it reflects... You know, it's not more absurd than fucking Game of Thrones. It ain't no more absurd than anything in the early 90s that WWF put out. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing that makes it more absurd than any other kind of drama TV show. They don't the have game. a fucking distinguished fucking wrestler dressed up as a goddamn turkey that comes out of an egg. So, I mean, That's, hey, <laughs> yeah, exactly. better than that. So I'm excited, man. Every week I'm excited for the next episode. Um, a lot of them, too, if you can't get it, I think a lot of them are on YouTube. I just canceled my sling. This week, because I got cable, and so next week's going to be my first week of trying to find it, so if you have a link for that shit, <laughs> send it to us on Twitter. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll but... be fine over here. I still have my sling. I don't have my cable, though, anymore, so no SmackDown for me. Aww. Yeah, just Skype me. Just set your phone up good in front of your TV. And... <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, that is the show. This is a fucking... Uh, an extra long episode. What do we got here? Two hours? Two hours, 25 minutes? 15 minutes? Extra long on Valentine's Day. That's right. Valentine's Day. Oh, a va whole two-hour Valentine's Day episode, and we didn't even bring up Brother Love. <laughs> How did that happen? Nope, nope, yeah. we're good. Just move on. <laughs> All right, well, it's been fun. We'll see you guys later. Fucking that guy sucked. <laughs> Moving on. Let's go. <laughs> that, guy, that guy does suck. Um, Why was he so red? That's the thing, because, like, those guys would be red in the face, you know? Because they would be fucking singing and yelling and shit. I have no idea why he was, like, fucking beat red. Is yeah. Me. Yeah, I know. Uh, coming up on the show uh, next week, we've got the bass player for The Vexed, Taylor. He returns. Uh, he was a guest kind of in the earlier days. Uh, he'll be like back. That. He's actually going to play some fucking music acoustically on the show. It's our first, uh, our first musical performance on the show. That should be something. Oh, another repeat, but it's not three times, huh? No, no, just, just two. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, it's just a very specific elite club that gets in three times. <laughs> like it's a yeah, five timers club, like an SNL. Yeah, man. like <laughs> I said to you on the on the fucking Facebook, and you said you're the first three time. What we're gonna do is do the Ric Flair thing. Well, we'll set a number that no one expects could ever be beaten. And then down the road, we'll completely make a mockery of it by having some other guy on two times a month. <laughs> <coughs> WWE booking, dude. That's right. Uh, you know, he'll be back then. Uh, after that, uh, episode 48, Lucha John from the Put Him Over podcast. Um, uh, pro wrestler Casanova Valentine. That takes us up to episode 50. Uh, we have a uh, listener of the show, longtime supporter of the show, Casey, will be on be hanging out and uh onward we march to the one year anniversary and uh at the end of march one year yeah. man hey, yeah there's, your there's one year later. anniversary is right right by ours ours is the uh 18th and 19th of next month yeah yeah we're right we started uh, off at the same yeah. time look at us and then we fucking <laughs> met each other like right out. i think you guys we started and then i saw your guys' shit for your first event and that's when we started talking so uh, and now we friends. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about my best friend. <laughs> you got a friend to be. <laughs> Good Randy Newman impression, man. Damn. <laughs> got the sack that made them Sitting at the piano. Handed some keys. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, man, one last time, the uh, upcoming... Uh, Fully Loaded Wrestling. Hit us with the details real quick before we roll, man. February 19th and 20th in Minot and Devil's Lake. Uh, like I said, we have the uh, last real man, Silas Young, is going to be there, along with some of our mainstays like Darren Corbin and Chainsaw King. And then our anniversary show is March 18th and 19th. That's going to be huge. And then uh, all of it's available on uh, on YouTube. Check us out on Twitter, F underscore L underscore wrestling. And then there's the uh, Instagram account, Fully Loaded Wrestling. And then we have the Fully Loaded Wrestling podcast on Suplex City Limits Channel. That was good. That was good. With our next guest, Heidi Lovelace. Yeah. There you go. There it is. Uh, as always, yeah, check out our friends, uh, the Federation podcast, New Blood Rising podcast, Put Them Over podcast. And uh, I'm just going to wrap it up. I hope everyone has a Valentine's Day. And more now than ever, may you get all of the dick and or pussy that you desire. All of it. All of it. All of your dick and or pussy belong to us. Bye, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, a winner is you.